thought Cairo Santos had a good game. Boo! This is the worst day of my life. <laughs> of, I don't know, like the last... Six days. 17 days. This is a terrible... This was, this was so bad, so unbelievably bad. But you're right. Yo, Trenton Gill was freaking awesome today. Trenton Gill, I thought, punted the ball well. Can we just talk about Roshan Johnson for the next hour? I was going to say no, Roshan, all about the future. Uh, 23 looked amazing. I thought it was Devin Hester out there and Jordan combined. Love that, Roshan. Put that number on special Look, things. When happen. you have the number one pick in the draft and the number two pick in the draft to pair with Roshan Johnson, you're going to the Super Bowl. No doubt. No doubt. Ready? Carolina lost. We lost. Tank City. Let's do it. We'll have tank standings by the end of the show. One plus two equals yeah. six. When That's did that happen? What did the Blackhawks do? <sighs> Tankathon or whatever? No, tank standings. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Connor Bedard could have played better on this Bears team than the actual Bears did. It's pathetic. Absolutely Unbe- pathetic. All right. Uh, welcome in. Uh, that was not how that was supposed to go. Adam Hogue, Mark Carmen, Greg Rags Jr. Greg's had a day. Um, the tailgate was great. We, Should we do a, a kumbaya? A it was one game. There's 16 We're more to go. No, to stop that shit right now. And I'm not even talking about the singing, which, by the way, don't stop do that. Stop that shit, too. Yeah, you stop that, too. <laughs> I don't want to hear if anyone in this entire show suggests that it was just week one. You can't. Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> That's I ridiculous. Agree. Angry I agree. Hogue. And we I don't care. It. This team could win every single game the rest of the season until we get to week 18. And it's still, you just got embarrassed, embarrassed. by yes. your division rival. No more Aaron Rodgers. doesn't have Aaron Rodgers. Jordan Love outplayed Aaron Rodgers in Aaron Rodgers' first start against the Chicago Bears in 2008. Matt LaFleur took Matt Eberflus to, to, to school today. No, n- that part, I... First of all, Jordan Love was impressive. He was great on third down. He played better than Fields. The, but the coaching part of this is so upsetting. Because we can talk about the offense all we want, and we will. We'll talk about Fields. We'll try to figure out the chicken or the egg on that. But the defensive side of the ball, I'm not doing this. Oh, it's, you know, I understand you've pointed out a bunch of times. He's the CEO. This is on his watch. This defense is on his watch just as much as it's on Allen Williams. And I'm not going to give him a pass for it. The defense got bailed out in the first half by some missed throws by Jordan Love. It, it, they got torched on third down. Every, er, in every facet, Matt Eberflus was outcoached. Hit's philosophy did not show up today. If, he, uh, if they boast, by the way, again, about their culture and the hits thing, I just, I, you know what? It, yeah, it, it, no, it, it, enough of that. It, enough. Just eno- like, en- seriously. enough. Seriously, because it, it, you didn't play like it. Yeah. Yeah, like it just, there was nothing that looked like hits, hustle, intensity, the ball, the ball. Did we get the ball? The, the I, ball. <laughs> smart. What? The ball. Smart. Did I see? Do we see smart out there today? The first play of the game, the kickoff, there was a penalty. Yes. The first drive of the game, they get a loss of downs on two failed sneak attempts that were pathetic. How about that one? See, no, we're before gonna, we get there, hang on, hang on. Matt hang on. Nagy came back to sneak Cole Komet in there. I swear he yeah, did. They're, they're, well, see, I didn't mind that. You don't want to do a quarterback sneak with your quarterback. Hand the ball. Do we see 23? If you can't get half a yard Just on hit. two plays with your offensive line, get a new offensive line. Well, they tried. <laughs> Swing and a miss on that one. I, I, Has I, Lucas Patrick ever played center before? I got plenty of. I, 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 you know what? I don't even want to talk about Lucas Patrick because, like, the focus to me also should be on Nate Davis. I understand there's probably some things going on in the background, but the fact of the matter is we don't know what those things are. So at the end of the day, all we have is his play to go off of, and he didn't have a good day. And you didn't play all preseason. Preseason reps are important. As much as everyone wanted to try to tell us that those weren't when we voiced those concerns through the three preseason games. That was on full display, not just with Nate Davis, with everybody. They, they had no continuity, no chemistry. Uh, uh, this, this team, if they wanted to create a narrative that nobody believes in them um, and, and <laughs> us against the world, they, they have successfully done it after one week. 
because well, I mean, and the reality was that wasn't the situation. We actually did believe in this. The team. whole country, I, the whole city, everybody picked the Bears to win today. They were favored they had, by Vegas, and this still could happen. But they were favored by Las Vegas sports books to be the most improved team in the NFL. The team we saw today they were looked the, worse than the team we saw with Tim Boyle at quarterback in Week 18 last they year. They looked worse, worse than the team last year, which was the worst team in the NFL. You know... The, the Athletic did a simulation that, uh, what, a thousand times that the team would 5.7 games. And Bears fans would have, would, would literally, they would, if, if I had said that, they would have punched me in the face. They would have climbed through the screen and <laughs> killed me. Now, after this week, like five wins, if you, if you were to poll Bears fans right now, how many games is this team going to win? What would be the most popular take? <laughs> it's moving. The it's, needle's it, it, moving. The needle has gone so far down. So, Christian so. A in the chat, just one game, fellas. Every person that says just one game, in the chat gets has banned to put, from the chat it's a super nope they got to put a dollar in the super chat jar you can say it but you got to put a dollar in the All super right, chat speaking jar speaking of super chats the duke is chiming in for 99.99 thank you so much duke the duke says right, really duke. appreciate you know duke. what duke you're still the mvp caleb williams you are a chicago bear <sighs> just kidding he'd go back to school cuz the bears are where qbs go to die is justin fields turning down throwing the ball downfield in favor of a screen if so, he's trash. If Getsy's calling that, then he's trash. Williams needs to be fired. F this franchise. Now, that's not, oh, wow. I mean, that's so we, not what I want to hear from the Duke. No, that's a bad way for the Duke um, to have to start his season. And I feel bad for the Duke. And the only one to blame is, well, the whole organization. But um, this is a tough day for the organization. I, to answer Duke's question there, I... I don't know the answer. I, I, the, you know, the way we watch, so this is a rare time. I've enjoyed being here in studio watching these games. There are moments where sometimes I miss being in the press box, and this is one of those moments because when you're in the press box, you can see the whole field. And I won't know until I go back and right. watch the All-22 whether he, they, he was checking the ball down when guys were open downfield. I was confused at halftime. We were doing a live watch-along. Thank you for everybody that joined us for the watch-along yeah, today. It was a lot of fun. Too. I enjoyed yeah. being on it in the second quarter. And I, I honestly was confused. I was confused by the offensive approach because everything looked so horizontal. But, yeah, it's possible guys were running free down the field and you just couldn't see it on the TV screen. But to me, it looked like this by design. And the touchdown to Mooney... In Nick's, Nick pointed out on Twitter, he looked like maybe Justin changed something at the line of scrimmage and just said, F it, I'm throwing it to the end zone. And surprise, surprise, it was a touchdown. I don't know. I can't wait to see the film to answer that question. Um, regardless the, whether it was the quarterback or the offensive coordinator, the offensive approach today was garbage. Right, because on plays that weren't screens, we still have to wait to the all-22 to see the full story. But the screens, they called the first screen they called – was successful, a really nice one to Khalil Herbert. Then they called 15 more, and 10 of them were in terrible like decision-making moments, third and seven, where you have two options. You can throw a screen, which is one option for a first down, or you can run guys downfield and have a multitude of options, or Justin Fields can also take off and run. Huh. How, why, take, give him an opportunity to make the play. You throw a screen to Chase Claypool, it goes kaput. The, the, the Claypool one that got tipped, was that was, one of terrible. My, that was one of my most frustrating moments. You're scheming a guy who has been invisible since he got here to get you a, to, to somehow break free and the blocking's going to go well, and that's your idea. That's the best option right here. That was that the was screen, um, then when they ran a screen in the second half, the whole Packers defense was ready for it because they had called it so many times. It was not a good day for the coaching staff, to say the least. Um, let's start with uh, as we always do. Um, every time I keep trying to start the show, I get a super chat. Well, <laughs> honestly, I've, I've been kind of scrolling through all of them yeah. just to show them first. We'll definitely get to all these later. I mean, if if we this is one's. Twenty dollar one. If we want to hit it now, or we could just again. I I, I could. I have all these saved. We'll throw. We'll throw bears on quiet in here. Twenty dollars. Okay. So pissed. Smoked by a team we had to beat. Quit on a team. Uh, quit on a team that you uh, don't quit on ever. Johnson's the only bright spot. Tank number two. Ugh. Two top three picks. Quarterback and Marvin Jr. Uh, fire everybody. <laughs> New regime with their own <laughs> oh picks. 
today sucks. Yeah. And he lives in Kauai. Yeah. That's not good when that well, is the vibe. I feel like flying to Kauai in the morning instead of watching this. And Adam tape. would probably say hi to you if he. Oh, 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 hey, we'll, we'll be on a beach <laughs> drinking margaritas tomorrow. Um, Somewhere on a beach drinking something strong. Jesus. Um, okay. Let's start with blame game as we start shows with a loss, uh, which we were hoping would be less than 50% this season. Right now, it's looking like it, that won't be true. Um, Carm, you've been talking a lot about the offense, so I'll let yeah. you go first with so, the offense so, coordinator. So I'm, uh, listen, I, I'm going with Luke Etsy. Um, to everything we are just talking about, it's just all the horizontal, it was just so painful to watch. And I, I implore the Bears as they – last year they had sort of the epiphany – after the Commanders game and let Fields run. Listen, this season is about still developing the quarterback. And I predicted the Bears to win seven games, which everybody wanted to go nuts about. But that would be a four-win improvement, which at the end of the season, if you go back and look at every team that improved this, your four wins is going to be at the top. So I am expecting a major step forward. But you're, you're, I'm not expecting them to win the Super Bowl. You're trying to figure out if, if you can actually have a real offense. And if, if Luke is concerned that letting Justin throw the ball downfield, that he's going to throw four interceptions, well, then let him throw four interceptions. And if he fails, then he fails. But at least he failed trying to be a, a huge success versus trying to like squeeze a little drop out of the lemon so it just tastes good enough in the water or whatever, whatever stupid analogy I'm trying to make. You get the point. L- Play a real offense, and we just did not see it today, and it was super frustrating to watch. And, and, and to be fair, a little bit, I think part of it is he doesn't trust the protection. But that's an so, excellent point. It's impossible to figure out. Yeah. We don't, it's chicken or the egg four different ways. But, but you know what? When you have the quarterback, like they let Mahomes be Mahomes in Kansas City, right? Like there, there's a lack of trust there. It was obvious in the game plan. I don't know how else to explain yeah, but it. But somebody in the chat earlier said, and I've seen it a million times on Twitter, they'll say Getsy doesn't trust Fields to throw it downfield, so they throw all these short stuff. I said it a million times at camp. We're not throwing the ball downfield. Yeah. You know, and I can't figure it out. It's a chicken or the egg that I, I personally can't answer. It's Hoag's job to answer that. It's my job to scream about things. Yeah. So Which my- you did, um, which is why you don't have a voice. We are now two for two in two seasons on our week one postgame show of one of us not having a voice. You didn't year, have it last year. Last year it was yeah, me. I, I feel like it's next better year. this year. <laughs> did we do the show without you week one, didn't we? No, I no, I uh, the, I missed the next two days. I stuck it out, got through Sunday, and then after okay. getting yeah. through the show, by the time I went to bed that Sunday night, it was go- like. We say, oh, you don't have a voice. Like, we could still hear you. Yeah, I was going to say, my voice When I woke up Monday morning, nothing was coming. Like, literally, it was gone. And I have a feeling that's what I'm going to meet yeah. on Monday morning. So, so, we'll see about Bears After Dark. Right. But my, my blame game goes to Matt Eberflus, as I pointed out earlier. I don't care about this CEO crap. We hired a de- defensive head coach. Fine. You made that decision. I expect your defense to represent your resume. And it's not. It looks like hot garbage. You let Matt LaFleur outcoach you without Aaron Rodgers. You got bailed out by bad throws by Jordan Love in the first half. Constantly on third down, going into zone and allowing those deep ins and, you know, just everything was open at the end of the day. And Matt Eberflus was severely outcoached. I can say Allen Williams too, but I'm sorry. The buck stops with Matt Eberflus. And then if you want to talk about CEO crap, then we can go to the, then I'm going to blame him for the sneaks. He has a say in those decisions then. What, yeah. what at, is situational at some point, the buck has, to, buck has to stop with the head coach too. He can't just be absolved of all blame because now he's the CEO. I'm going to blame him. So that's, he's my blame game today. Yeah, look, it wasn't pretty on offense. We can bitch about that, and we will continue to do so. But I, I thought there would be growing pains on offense. They ended up with 20 points. I predicted 23. It wasn't that far off. I was not expecting the Bears' offense to look like a juggernaut tonight. They gave up 38 points to a team that <laughs> had Romeo Dobbs. <laughs> As the best wide receiver that had Aaron Jones basically not used in the first half, which was actually bad coaching by Matt LaFleur. Great halftime adjustment, by the way, because he took over the game early in the third. That ended up being the difference. But then got hurt and didn't play the rest of the way. 
What the Bears put out there on defense today was pathetic. The third down specifically is where I'm going with blame game, my blame game. They allowed the Packers to convert 9 of 16 third downs. A number of those were third and longs. That ain't going to cut it. It was just bad. Eddie Jackson did not play well. 7 of 11 at one point, Mark Carmen tweeted. Yep. That was during when the game was still in yep. balance. Yep. It, it was awful on third down. It was There was no pass rush. They were sometimes better at stopping the run and then sometimes just getting gashed. They gave up 5.5 per uh, yards per play when it was all said and done. That's not good. It was painfully obvious that they – look, they, they chose to draft Darn all right. They passed on Jalen Carter. I supported it at the time, okay? Um, we supported it, but we still questioned it. Yeah. Carter, and we are on record on as a show that we would have gone with Jalen Carter. Okay. okay. Well, you were – actually, no. You I, were – I, I was. Were, yeah. I, Whatever. I, I, I was the only person that was holding some level of morality around the whole thing, which maybe I'm the idiot then because, whatever, it's the NFL, and that's just ridiculous. You and your moral compass. So, but ex- – exactly. <laughs> the moral compass was, was up. But at any rate, I – but we – you know, they said – Ryan Pohl said we can't address everything in one season. Finding somebody in the middle of a defense that can wreck an offense, though that's the hardest dude to find. We were begging all at training camp, go out and, and get somebody who can get to the quarterback, and they finally signed Yannick Ngakwe, which makes sense, and we, at least he flashed a little bit today. But when you looked at the defense coming into the season, I thought it was very obvious that if you can't get to the quarterback, you can't stop anyone. And – Jordan Love sat back there, and even with a bottom-of-the-barrel wide receiver group in the NFL, he just comfortably found literally everyone whenever he had to. That, that is Jordan Love to Romeo Dobbs and Jalen Reed. And Samari, whatever that's whoever that guy's Samari, name seventh <laughs> round. This is – it's not good. I don't know where, you know, I mean, I think the defense will get better. It ain't going to get that much better. I think we should pause here with our ranting and unhappiness and yeah. listen to Richard Budnick. You know what, Richard? I, uh, it's, it's, it, maybe every, like, 20 minutes in the show we can have a Richard come in here and, and, uh, <laughs> and give us some optimism like this. A uh, $20 super chat. We really appreciate it. He says, uh, Johnson is a reason to smile. CHGO postgame, a reason to smile. Football. A reason to smile. Let's not be this mad week one. Even though we have reason to pull out the pitchforks, I can't be this sad early on. Not healthy. Right, and for the record, I will do everything within my power to be very excited for week two in Tampa Bay. Well, you got to be excited because, I'm sorry, just as much as I put an onus on how important this game was for just optics and Rodgers being gone and all that, I'm sorry. I'm not going to overreact by saying – it's not overreacting by saying week two is a must win. they got to play at Kansas City week three. And I'm personally not going to give up on the season after one week, as abysmal as it looked today. But at the end of the day, if they can't find a way to win next week, they're staring 0-3 down the barrel. Yeah. And that is really bad. Yeah. For my <laughs> mental health. Yes. <laughs> yes. I can't take it. I uh, won't be able to take it. I have to say, and I don't really want to be the guy that takes joy in other people's misery. You love but, it. <laughs> but, but walking around in the third quarter and looking at Braggs just sitting in his chair with his I was head- doing what you told me to do. You said don't talk. Right, well, right, but you also were, you had your head down, you were staring at your phone, I could just see the smoke coming off your body. I, I, uh, I, yeah, I mean, it, I, it was a, I said, it's a, it's I said on day. Twitter that I'm at a loss for words, but I, I, like, that's not typically me, so you know damn well that I'm not going to be at a loss for words. Uh, big Cram here, $20 Super Chat. Sometimes I blame my dad. He came from Mexico and gave me a better life, but he had to stay in Chicago, and now I'm an unfortunate Bears, Sox, and Bulls fan. <laughs> With a Mark Carmen burner account, <laughs> we are poverty uh, on the week two. Yeah, there's some questionable life decisions in yeah. there, Big Cram. Hey, Big Cram, we're in this together, man. <laughs> we, we're not going anywhere. We are 
I'm not saying we're going to get better, but we'll maybe we'll get a drop tougher. I mean, Big Crem, that one made me laugh. Thank you. Yeah, oh, that was great. a good super chat. And we I can mean, all laugh together. Just the avatar. It's and cry. Can, can the somebody same tell time. me what, what are the Bears good at? I Ro- told you. They they have a good kicker, a good punter. Roshan Johnson. And, and I, I drafted him in the final round of my fantasy draft. Me too. I'm, I'm loving it. Yeah. Love you, Roshan. Yeah. He, he was good. 23, baby. It's not going to make a difference. All right. Um, he ran that dude over. That was awesome. Dude, that was fun that one time. That was awesome. The other <laughs> thing was awesome because it's been really negative, and I understand why. The other thing that was awesome was the entire team coming to Fields' defense early on. I liked it. I know DJ got a really dumb penalty, but at the end of the day, yeah, I they, want guys to have my quarterbacks back, and they all went over there. And at first it looked like no penalty was going to be called. It threw all that chaos, but I liked watching that whole team kind of square up. With the I liked Packers. that they had his back. I didn't like that they kept it going after the referees broke it up. And then they and the refs didn't throw a flag. But they did at the end. <laughs> right, and it right. cost us first down, and they didn't freaking score. That was a huge moment in the game. Yep. Let, let, to, that, turned out, that, that, were, that was the exact line where you talk about defending your teammate and then crossing the line right, and being undisciplined. Right, because DJ took somebody else out that was wasn't stupid. near... The field didn't scrum. they end up calling it on Claypool? That was confusing. Um, by the way, we need to get to our fields guide here. Um, can I just say one thing, and then you can do it, please, guys? I just, just want to say one thing because I'll forget. The, it, Justin Jones came out before this game, Adam Hogue, and he talked about how it's our time and we're going to kick their ass. And the Packer fans are stupid. And, 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 and all that stuff. And, 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 like, there's just been sort of this collective attitude around the Bears that, like, don't like whatever the circumstances of last year. And they this put out a tweet the other day that made me cringe. Start of a new era. Right, right. Let, let me let me. You gotta you. win the game first. All, all I want to hear from the Bears is we haven't done shit, and until we do, really nobody should believe in us except for us. And honestly, like I think this the the, the you won three games last year. Like the, enough with the braggadocious where you're going the whole thing. You have done nothing. So until you put something positive out there, start you know a, a winning streak, then we can start to hear some 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 you know big time talk coming out of that locker room. But until then, you know, ha- show some respect for the rest of the league and how far you've got to go to get there. Something along those lines. I mean, it. it I, I can't listen. I can't. I can't. I can't. They. They. The, 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 the talk and the non backup. It's got to stop. Well, and and to be clear, like I know we did that too. That. Um, Start we I think new era yeah. was like on our pregame. I, I was, was in my the newsletter. Hats. I get that. <laughs> that's us. That's for us to talk about. Right. For the team to put that out there before you'd even play the game. Right. Just stop. Stop. Stop talking like you guys have done anything because you haven't. I hope you do. Maybe you will. But until then, let's 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 keep that one look on the DL because you you just haven't had the, you have not earned the right to talk like that, and at, at all. Fields guy. All right. Presented by the number one pick in the NFL draft. Uh, okay, 24. After, I actually didn't think Fields was... The, the, the interception was horrible. But, like, on the list of reasons why they lost this game, I didn't... I don't really have him high on the list. I think coaching way before Fields. I, I think there's a couple different conversations we can have with this. Um, but anyway, he goes 24 of 37, so he goes ends up going way over what we what was being projected as like the over under of passing attempts. Obviously, they were behind late in the game. He did not get the over in yards, however, and in a very cruel uh, <laughs> cruel ending, <laughs> the over under on rushing yards was 59 and a half, whoa, and he finished whoa. at 59. Thank you, loser. And he did that with like <laughs> you called yourself a loser there, right? Yes. Okay. Because you had them go, him going over. That, that was my prop bet in pregame. Yeah. Oh, don't worry. I think all three legs of my parlay failed. So, hopefully you didn't listen to that. Uh, and then he had the bad fumble, too. He's got to hold on to the football better. We, I, we've we been saying it all offseason. The fumble luck was going to change. You don't fumble the ball nine times and only lose one of them. That's not how football works. It is shaped like this for a reason. It bounces in weird ways. And luck has a lot to do with it. And it doesn't bounce to you eight out of nine times. And uh, this time it did not bounce the Bears away. Early in the game, I thought Justin actually looked really good. He was he was hitting multiple targets. The short passing game was... I mean, I'm, Lawrence is kind of doing this. I, thing. I mean, it wasn't... I'm not saying it was elite. But at least the ball was coming out and, and, and there was some... 
I mean, nine of eleven for ninety-five yards at one point. He was, Who he cares? Was, That's nothing. I think, like, I think I, was, well, I, th- I think there's t- again, there's two separate conversations here. I right. don't think Justin Fields is why they lost his game today. Right. Okay. But if we're gonna sit here and keep waiting for him to be the guy, do they only have six points at halftime? He holds the ball just too long. We've all seen it time and time and time and time again. He, it just, it's obvious that he does not see the field as well as he needs to see it, which is why I just let him sit. I, I think he has the talent to get there, but he's not going to get there if you just scheme up all of this vertical stuff so he can just get rid of it quickly. He's, you're just it, – it, it, I'll give a and nobody wants to hear, but I'll give a tennis analogy. If you never hit through the ball and you try to try to get it back over the net, you're never gonna get good. Are you you're talking just, about my ping pong game? Basically, yes. You've okay. got you gotta swing at it, man. You gotta figure out how to actually hit the ball for real. He's gotta he's gotta play it for real. Uh, down the field is where the money is. And they're trying to like work the offense around him or work the offense around the offensive line, and that's just that just sucks. You know, when he, like you said, early on, I was pushing back on fans on Twitter saying that, it, like, just hyper-focusing on Fields being, oh, he's not the guy when they were losing. I'm like, how can you say that when it was clear that a lot of the play calls were extremely questionable, the defense was giving up things, the offensive line's having breakdowns where he's getting sacked, dead to rights, on a rollout, nobody unblocked. You know, it, but then... When you talk about, you know, 7 of 11 or whatever he has, 95 yards, you say who cares. Well, theoretically, the short passing game, the little dink and dunk stuff is supposed to set things up for downfield. Sure. And so, and, and okay, I got a million things wrong. So we can go over that first if you want. But the one thing I did say at camp was they were not throwing the ball downfield, and I was concerned. I'd never seen a camp yeah. where in my life, and I've been going to training camp for 20 years, some bad offenses, and I had never seen an offense not throw the ball downfield at the rate this team did at camp. I, that's all it was. Well, whatever. It was a, it was a, like, it was a good call by you, man. Well, Whatever, that- and I got a million things wrong. I don't give a shit about that. But at the end of the day, why? Why are we not seeing this? Because I saw Jonathan Quinn training camps where they'd go four deep balls at <laughs> least once in a freaking training camp. Well, whenever they were throwing them, it, was, it, it, it rarely connected. Rarely. Right. So that's the question is why? And I, and I got a lot of pushback when I put that out, and people were like, well, they're gonna, they're, th- this is what they weren't good at last year, the underneath stuff. And the, and the underneath stuff's going to set up the deep stuff. Well, it didn't, today it didn't. So, you know, I'm just praying it does next week, but that's all I got. Yeah. Well, all right. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, I've i been doing this for 13 years now. I just feel like it's always the same show. Yeah. You know? it's, it's just, We're like always it. responding to the same disappointments. Yeah, I used to watch it, and now i got to talk to you about yeah. it. Isn't it <laughs> worse over here? You know? Yeah. It's like that's why the open on Hogan Johns is what it is. Like, they always find a way. They just – Every time you think that they're going to turn the corner, they just they put you right. And this time it's the Packers. Good for them. Nine and zero now. Matt Lafleur is against the Chicago Bears. Ties Mike McCarthy for uh, best winning streak against an opponent to start a Packers coaching career. He did because uh, he, he was nine and zero against <laughs> the uh, Lions. Mike McCarthy, so, uh, worse stat than the Carm I, stat earlier. Yeah, right? I know. I, I would like know. to personally point the thumb at myself. When I was thinking about picking this game, I wanted. Yeah. Don't be negative, Carm. You gotta pick the Bears to win. Bears fans are gonna hate <laughs> you if you pick the Pack. Why would I pick the Bears to win this game? They never beat Green yeah. Bay. It, it's eight in a row. How about I'll pick Green Bay until until proven wrong? I, I've said that for years. You still and I more. still pick the Bears to win by ten. By, I, I was quoted I'll take, I'll take inside of Hallis Hall. Two weeks ago, saying everyone in this room is going to pick the Bears, but I'm going to pick the Packers just because. And then I sat down. Uh, I wrote down all my notes. I wrote down the depth charts and where they had advantages and blah, 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 blah. Bears uh, are going to win by 10. I'll take the blame here. This no. The meatball thing X's is and infectious. O's, the Bears should be the better team. But what you don't always account for, and the big unknown we, going into this game, was – could Matt LaFleur coach without Aaron Rodgers? And what the hell kind of coaching staff did the Bears really have? I'm not saying we have all the answers after this game. But today, in this game, 
Yeah. Matt LaFleur can coach without Aaron Rodgers, and the Bears coaching staff was not good. At all. And... <laughs> you did something I just, I, I, I just, I, 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 there's, there's just has been no evidence that we had this thing figured out, and the way they went about the preseason, the way they went about training, ah, we're gonna, we're just gonna, we're gonna go one quarter speed today, and we're gonna walk through. See, but I, I think you're. See, but I, when you say that, I think you're excusing the coaching because I'm not excusing the coaching that okay. was what the coaching was that we, I was sitting there watching training I'm like why are they walking they going, added a lot of talent we need like a Duke team. interruption button okay when ahead. Duke gives us a hundred dollars everyone has to shut up yeah, yeah and if anyone else wants to at any <laughs> point make any of us shut up myself included all you gotta do is do a hundred dollar super chat um here it is again from the Duke. I'm sorry, but there's no positives to look at with this game. Even Rojo with the costly, unnecessary roughness penalty on the kickoff. You want positivity? Positivity? Go look at your kids' faces. <laughs> they love you so much. Return that love by making sure they don't grow up Bears fans. <laughs> oh, um, I wish I could tell you that, Duke. Um, I, this is on my Instagram. My nephew, my poor nephew, who lives in the uh, state of Wisconsin, uh, his, his father's a Packers fan. His mom is my sister, a Bears fan, and um, he insisted, even with his mom out of town today, that he was going to wear his Bears jersey in Wisconsin with his dad rooting for the Packers, and then the updated video that I got midway through the game was the poor kid in tears with his father mocking him <laughs> and saying, you can be a Packer That's fan whenever you want. So you can go look at that on my. Uh, you know what? The, I, I want to flip this to Dudeski. We got a super chat from Dudeski, thirty-four dollars, trying to spin this the other way, saying, "Let's not let Meatball Island fall into the ocean." You made shirts for Pete's sake. All I'll say is that Mister Two Hundred Nineteen Million Dollars Guaranteed Joe Burrow scored three points today. Fields is no Burrow, of course, but don't forget Meatball Island brags. Well, we, I think we were going to talk about this later in the show. But well, we do have a whole Meatball Island se yeah, segment. Yeah, we were going to talk about to. this later in the show, but I'll say this much now. A meat, the, the misconception with meatballs is that they're only positive. No, a, no, you can go a fully a, negative. A meatball is driven by emotion. That's yes. what a meatball is. So meatball, <laughs> oh, meatball Island is alive and well, except I, on Meatball Island, where my mind is right now, I'm in a drunken stupor trying to go to sleep. But instead, I'm sitting right here trying to rationalize what just happened in my life. Um, Swinging <laughs> in from West Virginia. All right. Carms. Dude, Carms. Ski, I got more thoughts on that coming up. We got to okay. do a quick break here. But I, I do have, because I do think there's two separate conversations to have on what this week one game means kind of here in week one. That is not an overreaction. But also the fact that, yeah, the Bears are probably better than what we saw today. They have I to hope be. so. They have Holy to be. shit, Please. I hope so. Don't be mistaken. Um, hey, uh, it was great seeing some uh, CHGO diehards out at the uh, Ray CDJR grand opening yesterday in Fox Lake. It was a great event. A um, lot of prizes that they gave out. I know they had some Bulls tickets, some White Sox tickets. They were giving coupons off service, all types of things. Um, they they uh, have this sweet Jeep Wrangler 2024 model that they donated um, for Jeeps on the Run, all the pro proceeds going to Toys for Tots, and those raffle tickets to win that Jeep, which was fully donated by Ray C CDJR, uh, are on sale now. They had them on sale yesterday, and uh, you go to my Instagram, at Adam Hogue, to find the QR code. Um, it's also on Twitter, but also... I, I, JeepsOnTheRun.com was where you can go to get those raffle tickets. Uh, but it was a great event yesterday for their grand reopening. And during Jeep Adventure Days, you can get employee pricing on all new 2023 Jeep Gladiator models. And um, the savings, even if you missed the grand opening yesterday, the savings are all month long. So you're not missing out. It's good seeing Ray uh, yesterday. He was optimistic about this game, just like we were. And um, he texted me during the game, too, that, you know, he was disappointed. Because I think at heart, raise a meatball, too. This episode of CHGO Bears Fittingly is being brought to you by BetterHelp. 
Uh, look, if, <laughs> <laughs> if, I mean, what a timely read. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this <laughs> this couldn't be better. This is listen. If uh, I, I have used coaching and and therapy for many years to help me in my career, to help me in my personal life, and if you've ever thought about doing it just to lean on somebody whose only interest in life is you and making you better and seeing you clearly, then I highly recommend. Um, you know, dipping your toe in the waters and, and seeing what you can get from it. Bring your full self, uh, be as vulnerable as you can, and you'll get the most out of it. But if you are starting thinking of if you are thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Even for meatballs who want to go to sleep on Meatball Island, all you got to do is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist. And switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. So if you don't connect with the first person they give you, you can always try somebody else. Uh, go to betterhelp.com forward slash CHGO. They'll answer, they'll ask you a few questions, which you'll answer about yourself. You'll talk about your goals, what you want to get out of it. Then you're going to get an email once you've matched. You'll start connecting with your therapist. And from there, you can start scheduling sessions. I I don't, I've never met anybody who's gone to therapy and that has regretted doing it. So let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash CHGO today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash C-H-G-O. All right. Let's have a quick discussion about what this means. Um, uh, let's. Because I said this coming into the game. The importance of this game went beyond just what this team would be in 2023 and still could be, right? It's the NFL. Very rarely is the gap between teams as big as it looked like today. And sometimes it plays out that way. But you can play the same opponent months later and have a completely different result, okay? But I said this coming in. If you lose this game to the Packers, that they don't have Aaron Rodgers anymore, and especially if you lose it the way that they did. Exactly. The honeymoon period for Ryan Poles, for Matt Eberflus, for Luke Getze, certainly Alan Williams, anyone else, it's over. And yep. I think that would have been the case if they lost by one. You, you talked, and I agree with you, Carmen, with what you were saying earlier. We've been in that building almost daily since the spring. And there's just like, I don't want to call it arrogance. I don't think it's arrogance. I just think it's confidence. But there's a fine line between the two. And the, the amount of confidence that these guys have been giving off all summer is so far off from what we saw on the football field today that, yeah, any benefit of the doubt, which is really what you get whenever you bring in a new GM and a new coaching staff, that part's over. That, this is welcome to Chicago. This is now Chicago Bears. This is whether you want to say media, fans, whatever. This is, this is bad. The excuses you, have run dry. You, you know what it really – Bugged me. Who's our pun returner? That's name is that I'm forgetting. Trent Taylor. When Trent Trent Taylor, whatever doesn't matter. Trent Taylor and a couple of the other guys that they brought in right before the season started. And Flus is up there, and he's like, you know, well, we just got to get these guys acclimated into into our culture and what we do, and get them up on the hits philosophy. Dude, you are not Bill Belichick, and and bringing you into the Patriot way. <laughs> You are in your second year as a head coach in the NFL. You're a longtime guy who grinded your way. Congratulations. I relate to it. I'm a longtime grinder in the media world. I respect you to the end of the earth just hanging in there but, and, and getting this opportunity, and that's great, and I hope you have a tremendous amount of success with it. But to talk about, like, we're all boldly, like, we got we to gotta get them acclimated to your culture. You guys won three games last year, and you had a bunch of dudes that were having fun in the locker room, which was cool. I liked your locker room a lot, but, like, there's no evidence that there's some winning culture around here. Yeah. What are we talking about? It just, it just well, and I think that's what I mean by the honeymoon period is over. Like, nobody wants to hear the talk anymore. Right. 
You Last gotta, year, the excuses were you could find reason in there. Yeah. I'm not even saying it had to be pretty, but you had to win this game. And at the very least, you couldn't get your. You had ass to play kicked. a good game, and right. like, oh, maybe it's the NFL. You it came get down your to, ass kicked in all three phases. Like you, you hear, you hear, you hear. Alan Williams talk about it every week. Matty Flus talk about it every week. It's about one-on-one matchups. Y'all lost every single one-on-one matchup. I mean, the Packers were like, let's let's scheme Aaron Jones against T.J. Edwards, and 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 Jordan can will probably be able to hang in there. And all you got to do, man, is just wait for this guy to make one cut. He'll be wide open. Just just hit right. that. Hit that. That didn't seem like rocket science. We, so, so now on the back end of that. Oh, my God. No. Like, it's not over. Season's not over. No one should be fired. But you better turn around next week. Because like you said, Braggs, you didn't got Kansas City in week three. Broncos. <laughs> How fast do I, how fast do I move to the Lions starting one and six last year? Is that happening after the Kansas City game? I, I said yes. too. That, that <laughs> yes. I I I. But that's a good point. Like this could still manifest itself and develop as the season goes along. I am not. But that doesn't mean that every ounce of criticism that we've given them already in this show is not valid. For what this rivalry means to this city, what this fan base has been through for the last three decades, and all the talk that wasn't just created by us or the fans going into this game. It was exuded by the players and the coaching staff all offseason, well, and the, you didn't get it done. The Duke rule is in effect. He's dropping dollars. Let's go. Duke. Like I said, you can interrupt me too on the uh, one. That's uh, why keep I them threw coming. The Duke I love it. Thank you. Uh, another one hundred dollars <laughs> super chat from the Duke. Keep them coming. Uh, he says that's exactly right, Hoagie Cat. <laughs> Honeymoon is over. This is their team, and it looks like shit. No more quote. It takes time to build. You look worse than last year with a supposedly upgraded talent roster. I'd say fire them all, but I w- but it won't matter because we can't fire George. That definitely puts it. Okay. We, we do have to take a deep breath here. Just a little bit of a deep breath. No. No? <laughs> I, I'm going to take a deep breath. Maybe you, tomorrow. You, you, can, you, can, you can go wherever you want to go. That's totally fine. I do you? Go home. Yeah. <laughs> well, that, that's coming for, for all of us in about an hour. Can't wait to hear from Nicholas Boreano. Some, some of the comments that I'm seeing coming out of Soldier Field are I'm starting to get Maybe a little. You want to throw up? I'm getting a little nauseous. But, but I don't want to even look. I, do we have to have Nick on? I, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I want to have Nick on. I don't necessarily don't want to hear what he's the, the now, information he's giving us. You know what I feel like? The tables have turned. Now I feel like Hamp and OB when yeah. Adam Hogue used to come on the post game show <laughs> after a bad loss. That's and so they would just and you'd be sitting there in the room with them, and I could hear. I couldn't even see them, but I could hear it through the phone. And then I could just hear them. They how much they wanted to, sh- to just kill me because uh, of the information that I, all I was doing was reporting. I was, it wasn't my opinion; it's just what I was reporting. But I could just hear it. Your hit was uh, at your hit was at four thirty. At at, at, at four twenty five, we'd go to break. I'm like, hose. I said, we have to talk to him. <laughs> I'm I'll trying. handle it. I'll ask all the questions. You guys can go to sleep. The and Bears then, are slowly turning me into OB. Yeah. And then by the middle of the interview, OB would get so to Adam! <laughs> Naggy. Okay. Oh, no. I've lost my train of thought. I don't know where Sorry, I was. I didn't mean to interrupt it's, you. It's but. fine. I, it doesn't matter. I, just, I have a question that, co- that Cody brought to us late in the game. Cody Del Mendo did a great job on the uh, watch, watch along throughout the game. Um. He said, is this loss to the Packers worse than the 2019 season opening loss to the Packers? Which was, of course, a completely different situation, but similar hype, like the excitement. We, we talked about it coming up to this game that we thought this was the most excitement okay. this team and fan base so, has had since going so into that So that team game. had Super Bowl aspirations that, in your world, where you're talking about having a legitimate reason for that, they had just made the playoffs – they brought back that whole team and added and got rid of the kicker. And then they drank Kool-Aid and danced at Bears 100 yep. and then did nothing that whole season. Yep. And Matt Nagy tried to move to 2.0. And they, Mitch and Matt Nagy both embarrassed themselves. Yep. They blamed Mitch first, then Nagy second. Right. That- this is different because of Aaron Rodgers not being there. 
because the idea of why you guys fell into the trap of the Bears should win this game, because they should have on paper, because Aaron Rodgers was no longer there. And the great unknown was Jordan Love with Matt LaFleur. And what we learned today, Carmi V, got to give her a shout out. She has pointed out multiple times, much to the chagrin of myself and other Bears fans, where she was like, he's in a good environment with with veteran running backs, a good offensive line, and a coach that has been calling good plays for a long time. And so if Jordan Love has limitations, they're still going to move the ball. We didn't want to believe that. That was on full display today. We didn't know what Jordan Love was going to do today. Now we know. He threw but this three is touchdowns. where I wonder sometimes about week one. Like, who should really be getting the credit? Because I am thoroughly disappointed in how the defense played. And I, I don't know how much the defense is to blame for like I want I think we can give them like we can give them credit too, but that was pathetic from the Bears' defensive standpoint. So I don't know, like, do you think a month from now we're going to be talking about Jordan Love in the same way he's getting all the credit today? I'm not, I'm still not convinced. I'm sorry, I'm not. The, you're, look, it's his second start in the NFL. You're right to be skeptical. But I did think he showed some solid composure and some great touch and vision. Well, and he's been he's been waiting a long time to get an opportunity. Well, and, I, and he I, should I, feel good about himself today. I don't think the Jordan Love aspect should be overstated. But Matt LaFleur did show today that he's going to call plays. Because even in the first half when they weren't working because Jordan Love badly missed wide-open guys down the field, they were still good p- play calls. Yeah. And then he just kept calling them, and then before you know it, the, the straw broke the camel's back. That, that screen pass that they threw back to the other side of the field to Aaron Jones, it was a phenomenal play call. And they had it lined up with 17 blockers over there. It was well done. Look, the Bears had one sack today. Yannick Ngakwe had a sack. That's it. Uh, anybody see Jervon Dexter out there? Uh, he made it, one play. It says here that he had a tackle. Okay. Yeah. Did did anybody see Zach Pickens out there? He made one play. I, I I don't rem- I I don't remember. Did he got in the backfield I mean, and forced that one okay. stop? All and right. I think they scored on the next play anyway. I mean, T.J. Edwards had 14 tackles, but was 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 badly beat. Maybe it was I don't know. Maybe the Packers just can't necessarily blame him for that. But I mean, he was all over the field, and, and Tremaine had a couple of moments too. But I you know you're you're disappointed in the defense. I get a little confused. Like do you? I mean. So you think there's a, like should be a capable defense? Yes. Right. That was incapable. That was and so how beyond I, incapable. That was horrible. That was that was. Did so, you guys answer the question though? Which loss was worse? Fuck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did you um, just whisper the f word to yourself? <laughs> I think <laughs> for for, for me for me the other loss was worse because that team had Super Bowl expectations and they and literally the whole city was going crazy. And See, you, I think they this came, one's more surprising though. But then like, that but was not that then, surprising. Like then, Aaron Rodgers came in your house and spoiled your scored, season opener. They scored like, three points. It was the end of that. That that game was actually for, for me. It was officially the end of Mitch Trubisky. Like, because we would have the debate and all these people. Maybe the guy to my left was yelling about how good he was, and others were. And I'm like the guy, and I'm like, no, he's not. No, he's not. No, he's not. And then then they scored three. I'm like, I'm not listening to one more person tell me this guy can play because he cannot play. Um, and because and and so and where are you on Justin Fields? I am. Is at, this that bad? No, I, I, no, I actually early on in the in the game, like as I said earlier, I what I saw was like, okay, he's making a step here. I just think Field said one of the things that he that he came after about the vertical game, and I, I don't even necessarily love this comment, but they asked him about it, and he said that was the game plan to be vertical. Yeah, that was that that was the game plan. Now I can't wait to go. No, 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 wait. You're saying the vertical lack vertical game plan or lack thereof, and he said. That they, was, what they did was the game plan, or that Sean ha- was Sean, the- Sean Hammond tweeted Justin Fields on lack of downfield pa- uh, uh, passing. He puts in, in in parentheses. I'm paraphrasing here. That was the game plan. Got to be. Got to get better blocking out wide. So their game plan was to go horizontal, right? And they that's what I'm and they just to say. didn't execute, right? That's a horrible game plan. It's a yeah. horrible game plan because. Somebody, I, I wish I could give the person credit that said it on Twitter. So I apologize for whoever said this. I'll just give Gary the credit. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's my guy. I love him. But 
somebody said on Twitter that your screen game should should be your changeup that you throw. It shouldn't be your fastball. And they threw it so many times. They like threw like the second play of the game was a screen, but it was a good one. Okay, yeah, it worked. You threw them off, but now you got to keep pushing the ball downfield and then sprinkle those in. That can't be the staple of your offense. Like, where was the play action shots downfield? Right. Courtney Cronin tweeted at halftime, Bears offense about to start its first drive of the second half. Per at ESPN stats, Justin Fields averaged 2.9 air yards per attempt in the first half. He's never averaged fewer than five per attempt as a starter. Yeah, and Sean Hammond updated uh, that after the game. Justin Fields intended air yards per next-gen stats, 3.3 yards, second lowest mark among all QBs so far in week one. Right. And Fields is telling you that that was the game plan. So the coaching staff has got to sit down, obviously, and have some really honest questions about where they are, where they're trying to go, and how the hell they're going to get there. Okay, so tell me if I'm overreacting here. But we heard them talk about all offseason, what he needs to get better at, what they're working on with him, which was throwing the ball down the field. Not necessarily deep balls, but like the intermediate passes right like how many targets at least more vertical than this horizontal stuff so if they come out in week one and everything's horizontal what does that say about the confidence that they had in the improvement that he made exactly right not good it says it speaks very poorly to it but let me just remind everybody and i was on board with the trade i'm still on board with the trade you traded out of the number one overall pick and the reason one of the main reasons you did that outside of getting a number one last year was getting dj moore who we saw fields throw the ball to eight thousand times a day in training camp and leading up to the season dj moore was targeted two times today yeah that's that's unbelievable they threw the ball to him twice what are you doing well, but and why, and that's a lose lose. Why are you doing it? Well, and that's a lose know? lose because if they're going to say, "Oh, Jair Alexander did a really good job of covering him," well, you traded for him to be better than that. Well, yeah, yeah. and he so and it's he, either like it, 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 it's bad either way, right? But he beat right. Jair. Either but, he wasn't good enough to get open, or you didn't do a good job of just targeting him and making him a focal point of the offense and DJ, getting him open. DJ beat. Jair Alexander last year when they faced off against each other. So he's shown that he's capable. You know, obviously I, Alexander's allowed to improve and you know. D- DJ Moore. Hold on. Hold on. Let's just Well, DJ Moore's a Chicago Bear now. Yeah. Well, well D- DJ Moore has never in his career don't even say ha- the moose had Monaco. less than seven he's never had less than seven hundred and eighty eight yards. He said uh, it at halftime. All right. 788 yards. <sighs> the Moose no. and Muhammad. Carm quote. already quoted Moose and Muhammad in a half. Time. DJ Moore in the way, 16 Kel, games. I, I, I Will you just on wait screen. till you have whatever you're going to say instead of just mumbling through it? <laughs> Other people have points. Yeah. You I, can come, we can come back to it when you have. Do you have it now? Do you have it now? I just want to yes. throw this super. Okay, high. you have it? I do. Okay. He, <laughs> caught, he caught two balls. For 25 yards in a 16 game season, that would be 400 yards, which would be 388 less than he's ever had in one season. So the Moose and Muhammad wide receivers come to Chicago and die. Well, not literally. On the football field <laughs> as productive receivers that would hold a drop of water today. I'd love to see if you put DJ Moore in here right now and asked how he thought he was used today, what do you think he would say? I don't think if he was being honest, it would be very favorable. Twenty five yards. Uh, we've uh, had tons DJ of super chats today. Yeah. I've been showing them on screen during the show. I just want to point this one out because we're talking about DJ Cal said DJ Moore having only a couple targets seems like malpractice. Yep. It's not good. On a side note, we'd all like to thank Greg Braggs for not sign, uh, setting his lineup in the in our... <laughs> and he probably our, never uh, will. The funny thing well, is... Well, you, you won't because you won't, you're out of the you, league. You're now. out of the league. Thank God. I got one other fantasy league that I'll never be able to pay attention to either because when the tailgate got done, somebody put on Twitter the the Panthers lost. And I was like, oh, yeah, there were games from noon to three. I like, yeah, we're so, football works. we're doing so much tailgating fun, which is great. Don't get me wrong, I love it. 
but I have zero time to pay attention to such a thing. So kick me out of the guillotine league. Let someone else win it. No one You're has out. to kick you out. You're out. You didn't set your lineup, and everybody in the whole league got a free pass. And there's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, <laughs> and Saturday in a week in addition to Sunday when you could have taken five seconds to set your Let team. me ask you a question. But thank when you. When you posted that Wait video at Soldier Field oh, before no. the sun was up, what did you do between then and, like, I'm not even going to say, like, 10, like, a lot. 7.30? Working. What I were you doing? We I pulled the U-Haul van up to the tailgate lot. I had a lot of stuff in the in the U-Haul that I had to get out of the truck. Then I had to stage. You our didn't area. have five minutes to set your lineup. I had no time, zero time. Again, though, there's other days of the week. Yeah, can, and also, who cares about fantasy football? Can you can you try to rewind back to seven a.m. and your mood at that point and just do that? Oh, guy the right tailgate now? was so much fun. It was. I, I love <sighs> seeing all the all the fans that came out. To support CHGO, all the Bears fans, and, you know, hanging out at the Chicago Bears tailgating club lot. There's, there's really nothing better. Uh, I wish I could go back to that moment because we were living a good dream at that point. It was a good dream. You I were s- so adorable. When I, I saw came you up. on top of a bus. Drag yep. me up there. So come on out, week four. <laughs> we're gonna try to be two and two, baby. Yes, two and two. At week the, four. At, wait, yeah, or three and one. We can beat Kansas City. Fuck it. Let's get back on Meatball <laughs> Island. <laughs> oh, I want to cry. Tampa Bay won at Minnesota today. I'm sure well, they, no problem. Exactly. They used up their win. I have to say, though, I th- that has week two bounce back written all over it. That line already moved. The Bears were one-and-a-half-point favorites, and they're now one-and-a-half-point underdogs. And that just has... The Bucks overachieved today. The Bears underachieved. I'm not saying it's going to be a pretty game, but. Oh, we got them. One and one. I'll pick the Bears by 10. Duke's going to be putting in $8,000 <laughs> Super Chats next week about how the season is going to be an incredible run to glory. Oh, okay. Sure. Um, all right. Well, we still got Carbs Notes coming your way. Meatball Island, which I'm not even really sure what that segment is, but we'll make it a segment. Um, for everybody who used game time today, I hope you had a good time. It's oh man, I feel for those people. I know people paid as much as it costs for the whole Sunday ticket to go to this game. That's why, you know, I always use game time. But just well, if they did use game time, at least they got a deal. That's true. They didn't get you know robbed by some of these other ticket places that upcharge you and all these things uh because buying tickets on your for your favorite events shouldn't be stressful you know like watching the chicago bears play football uh game time's the fast fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all sports doesn't have to be sports though music comedy theater if you want to get out of watching sports all together you know i could use like a comedy show right now might have to go on game time and yeah, just well it's winning time tonight what Winning time. The Lakers. Yeah. Rise of the Dynasty. That's, That's tonight. That's, it's Sunday. Yeah, you know. yeah. I gave up on that show halfway through the first season. Eh, it was, it actually, last week's was probably the best episode ever. I don't have time for TV during football season. Now I do. Oh, uh, with killer <laughs> deals <laughs> on last minute tickets and the best price guarantee you can stop stressing over the tickets, start getting hyped for the fun you, in theory, will have. Um, You'll also get images of your seat before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive. Buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Actually, that really is that easy. You can buy tickets in a matter of seconds. Two taps. You're set to go. They're sent right to your phone. They come way faster than some of those other ticket places, too, that, like, I've sat outside a stadium before. I'm like, where the hell is my ticket? Why is it just not here on my phone? Uh, That's not going to happen to you with game time. Snag the tickets without the stress with game time. Download the game time app. Create an account. Use code CHGO for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code CHGO for $20 off. Download the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. And we appreciate everybody who's already done it. And if you haven't, becoming a diehard uh, is one we try to give you the greatest value you can possibly get. Also, it's a tremendous support for all of us. Uh, Of course, 
the podcast and the live shows, but you get to hang out in our Discord. Discord. You get to hang out in our happy hours when we get on Zoom, and you can ask all the questions. Get we, you get discounts the, on the keep merch. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, no, I want my diehard read. Give me my diehard read. You Go get ahead. Discounts on the merch. Go ahead, buddy. Live events. Yeah. Tailgates. I just intercepted this read. That's fine. It's a first in CHGO Bears. You history. get a free shirt when you become a member. Yep. You There's really no reason. the read. There's really no reason not to do it. So uh, become a guy or go to allchgo.com. Hoax her- newsletter. Hoax newsletter. Exclusive to every Bears fan yeah. every, every single day so of your ju- life. So Justin Fields in his post game. Oh, wait, uh, hold on. We have the alarm again, and this is oh. a weird one. This okay. is the Duke 811-2. Is this a different Duke? <laughs> a different I don't think so. Take a look at what he says. Okay. Uh, wow. This is interesting. The Duke 2.0 says... Uh, For ninety nine ninety nine. Yeah, uh, another $100 Super Chat here. Apparently, I can't send more than 500 bucks in the main channel, so I made a new one. I'll take a game ball MVP tonight. Thanks. I'm popping a Xanax and going to bed. God is dead. Hope is lost. I'm done. I'm not following the Bears anymore. Anyway, talk to you guys next week. <laughs> is that not the essence of being a Bears fan? We can't thank you enough, dude, for your support. You Love make, the Duke. Make, uh, it, make it better to get through this. The Duke Unless, one. Uh, we know you're Duke George two. McCaskey. It's, I don't know. The, his previous super chat, he was ripping on George. I don't well, know that's that exactly what George not would George. do. That's he what, is not George. All right, fine. I'm just saying, if if you were George and you were trying to throw you off the scent, that's what you would do. Thank you, Duke. Enjoy your Xanax. Okay, go ahead and read that. So Fields after the game. Is that on our CSGO Bears account? It is on our CSGO Bears account. We've made a graphic on it. Um, thank you to Stephen Nicholas for getting that done and – we have a great uh, crew working on this. We have a phenomenal today, crew working today and, and every me. day. It's Field says, I want to say sorry to the teammates and all of the fans that are rooting for us. We will bounce back. We will be good. I don't want to nitpick this quote, but I well, you will. But I will. We will do everything we can to be good. Yeah. I will leave no stone unturned in getting us as far as we possibly can go, something along those lines. But, th- like, I, Justin... Oh, you're saying that's what he should have said. Yeah. I, listen, he doesn't need to apologize for anything. Justin Fields works his ass off. Justin Fields is doing everything he can to be the, the very best quarterback and represent the Bears in a first-class manner, and I don't doubt him for a second on any of that. Uh, he does need to play better. That is that is true. But I, I don't think he needs to apologize. Fields is... is Every time you look at him, he's buried in his, the Microsoft service, whatever the hell that thing's called, lo- looking at plays. Um, he's just – he, the offense has got to be better, and he's a, he's a huge part of it, but he also could use a game plan that will let him sink or swim. That's how I see it. If he, it it's okay if he sinks – because maybe someday then he'll swim. But this was just like he just sank without even like getting in the pool. I don't know. It just, it's annoying. I, I, it's, and he's got to get rid of the – and he has to get rid of the ball quicker, period, Sean, end Sean, of story. Uh, Sean Hammond did a good job of summing this up um, uh, on Twitter. So he, ball's got to come out. This is what Matt Eberflew said on Jordan Love. Quote, I thought for the most part he did well. Obviously they executed on third down and my hat's off to him. Then he got asked about Justin Fields. He said, I've got to look at the tape. To make a big statement like that would not be right for me to say without watching the tape. That's how it always is, right? What's he going to say tomorrow after walk, watching the tape? He did some good. I thought there was a lot of good there. And, uh, you know, there's, there's plus stuff for us to clean up. That's what I'll say. Which I got to watch true. the presser, but I heard somebody say, I think, in the chat. That he Chats said that the, the run game, he thought the run they stopped the run well. I mean, I got to hear him say it for myself. He did not say that. I would hope not. I got to hear it for myself. He definitely didn't say that. He didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I would assume so. But I just always trust the chat, especially when it comes to breaking news. I mean, I I mean Aaron Jones, if he hadn't blown out his hamstring, would have. I mean, the pat, they held him under 92 rushing yards. 
whenever they needed yards on the ground, though, they couldn't stop them. I mean, Aaron Jones averaged 4.6 yards per carry at 41 yards on nine attempts, but A.J. Dillon had 19 yards on 13 attempts. This is where the stats are lying. I'm sorry. Well, they are and they're not. I mean, that's why I said earlier in the show, like the Bears had moments where they were stopping the run. Guys were getting in the backfield. I didn't think the pass rush was good enough. I mean, Jordan Love had all day to throw in some of those third downs, which is why they finished 9 of 16. And like you pointed out during the game, it was 7 of 11 at one point. So, I mean, I'm watching Aaron Jones walk into the end zone. I did not think the Bears were physical enough against the run. I don't care what the stats say. Yeah. So, um, someone especially else just said he did out, say that. Especially around the edge. Yeah. What are you saying in the chat? Someone else in the chat said that they did do that. that, that so that's what I, the, reason, the reason I want to know if he said that is because – when you said, I got to look at the tape about, he said, I got to look at the tape about fields. Right. So, but he didn't cop out about defending the defense who gave up how many points? 38. So. So Jay Zawoski is a great comment here too. And this is why I'm confused. And I alluded to this earlier in the show. Uh, Jay says, if their plan with fields all off season was to throw horizontal, that means they didn't and don't trust Fields, so then you should draft Bryce Young at one. Well, it's either they don't, it's two, there's, there's three things. This is what I hate about this. We're literally back in the same discussion we've had with Mitch, we've had with Jay, Rex, The place Orton, we kept saying this is the place you can't be this season. The chicken or the egg, but it's three different ways. So whatever the third thing is, is it they don't trust Fields? Or that Adam said earlier, they don't trust the offensive line? Or it's that Luke gets he doesn't know what he's doing calling plays? Or is it all three? Because when it was the Mitch problem, we were like, it's Mitch. He sucks. He can't read a defense. Then when in, he was gone, we bring in Nick Foles, Super Bowl MVP, beat Tom Brady one year through for 30 touchdowns and one interception. Then all of a sudden we realize, oh, wait, it's also a Matt Nagy problem. So it's this... Is it a chicken or the egg? Is it one or the other? Is it all of the three? Is it two of the three? I can't. I honestly can't tell you. I just can only see the result of the play. When they run a play action rollout and, and Fields gets sacked immediately, I blame it on the offensive line. When they throw a, a screen pass on third and seven and it sucks, I'm blaming that on the offensive coordinator. When Fields throws a pick, I blame that on Fields. I don't know how to differentiate why they call plays because of who they don't trust. Uh, to Jay's point, it's just depressing. <laughs> like, come on, man. You you could not have spent the entire offseason and then be like, you know what? Let's go horizontal. You couldn't have done that. But they did. And then the other side of it is, is it just because the offensive line imploded in the last couple of weeks? Well, if that's the case, then... You just didn't plan well. It's not funny. No laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Big Dave's always laughing. Yeah, we need Big Dave on the show just to, like, <laughs> I don't know. Level, out, there level out the depression here. Big Dave walking in right now is unbelievable. There's not, is there a bull show until? Uh, I love his energy. I wish Dave. there was. I love his energy, always. I love that the guy. The greatest. See his show bulls. Make sure you watch him. Okay. Do we have? Uh, are are we gonna have? I, I'm working on uh, the clip right now. I'm just okay. getting it uploaded here. In a, a, give me a couple minutes here, okay. and we'll have Will and Nick from uh, from Soldier Field. Yeah, we got Will and Nick out at uh, Soldier Field, joining the show. Um, okay. Okay. Do we know what Meatball Island's supposed to be? Well, I mean, like, what's our most meatball take of the sh of the sh of the game? Well, if it's from a positive standpoint, it would be that but Roshan Johnson is now RB1. But as well, I've said before... Roshan is him, right? He's RB1. <laughs> That's what they say? Not him, just RB1. But if you want to go from a negative standpoint, because as I've tried to point out, Meatball Island does not mean that you're always positive. It means that you're always passionate and you're always emotional. Yeah. You, you think with your heart, not your head. So 
in that regard, if you want to take a negative spin on Meatball Island and be over, overly irrationally angry, it's we shouldn't have hired Matt Eberflus. We should have hired an offensive coach. Matt LaFleur is an offensive coach. He kicked the shit out of Matt Eberflus today. Brian Dable? Well, he Was, didn't want – I mean, everybody will say Dable, but he didn't want to come here is what the end game was with that. <laughs> think money, we, money talks. Right, he was always going to New York. But in a vacuum, had he wanted to come here, I would have prob- maybe preferred I, that. I'm saying you make him want to come here. You pay the man the money. Yeah. I think if the Bears really wanted to have Joe Shane and Brian Dable, they could have. To Lawrence's point. Look, what? just keep Meatball Island open. We need it it's open. It's always open. No, but like we need said. It, we need it open. Just sometimes, I'm telling you, if it goes down a dark road, Meatball Island can get nasty. I want to see Carm is that, go. Is that like a hurricane on Meatball Island? Like I what? want Carm's Meatball Island take here. Please He's, do it. He was do on it. it. He joined do on it. Thursday. Do it. No, I'm what? thinking one specific thing here. Go ahead. Leave me there. I can't get there right now. Secret. Quarterback. Secret. You want? Beige, <laughs> man. Listen, I've seen about, I don't know, 500 Bajan comments in the chat so far on the show. I, I, I have been impressed, I have to say. There have been, you might actually be right, 500 Bajan comments, and you have not mentioned them once. Now, no, three because, of them might be your burner accounts. I don't Shout think... Shout out to Big Cram. It, it, is, it is not time for swinging in from West Virginia. Oh, it. boy. Um, I regret teeing you up on this some now. Said, no good. Okay, listen. I This is like Bragg's teeing up Gary. I, will be, hour last I week. will be very interested if at some point Justin Fields can't get into a game this year, how he'll do. But I want to see Justin Fields play football. I want, that to, I want them to let him sink or swim let him s- put him in the gun let the play is this this dude is going to be open 20 yards down the field over here this right. dude's going to be open 20 dollars down the field over there and if they're not open i want you to throw it to his back shoulder and if he doesn't make a play and it gets picked i don't care that's what i want to see right like if matt lafleur could do that with jordan love and a bunch of scrubs at wide receiver today then why couldn't the bears do that it either means your coaching's not good enough or your defense isn't good enough. One of the two. Or your offensive right. line isn't good enough. Or you got a million things. Or your play caller isn't good enough. It's impo- it's, people act like it's so easy to figure out. Like You it, traded <laughs> your number one overall pick for DJ Moore and you threw the ball to him twice. Dude, 10 targets. You traded a second-round pick for Chase Claypool. I don't want to see the ball get thrown to Chase Claypool, but throw the ball to Chase Claypool. <laughs> you, you, come on. I believe he had one target, right? He had one – no, he had two targets, and one of them was a sad-ass, well, stupid-ass screen that got tipped – well, and then throw the other, him the football. Well, and then the other thing too is like, especially in the first half, when Fields got out of the pocket and kept his eyes downfield, he found guys at times. Tyler Scott, couple dudes. How many times did they make him stay in the pocket? They, the one rollout they had, he got sacked. Fine. The first play of the game, they found Tyler Scott. The dude was wide open. Then all of a sudden, he just disappeared. I saw that dude shake people during training camp left and right. That dude knows how to get open. He's fast as hell. You telling me we can't try one deep shot to Tyler Scott all game long? Come on, man. Luke Getze gets an F for today. I would also an go back F. to I, I would also go back to, and I don't disagree with you, the inactive decision. If that's all you're getting out of Tyler Scott, Valus is a better kick returner. That's fair. He should have been active. Listen, and, and I don't. If neither one of you, if the, if neither one of them's giving you anything on offense, you put the better kick returner in the game. You have better field position. I was when they threw the ball to Tyler Scott to start the football game. I was like, "Sweet, let's go scheme that dude into the offense and scheme and everybody." Like, see in week two. Yeah. Okay, that was the one time we saw him. That's why he was active. Yeah. I mean, what a. 
There's so many things that you just- are. And, and I, 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 I did this at, like in my video at nine in the morning after I won an amazing tennis match that everybody cares about. And I should be talking about my win today over Morty. But look, <laughs> Morty, you are playing with house money. You are. No one is expecting you to do anything this year. How old was Morty? 78, and I hated him. I wanted to kill him. He was oh my God. an irritating human individual. <laughs> Hope he's not watching the show. Love you, Morty. Morty, if you're a diehard, we love you. I really don't know his name. I just, he just looks like a Morty. <laughs> <laughs> Morty he looks Seinfeld. like a Morty. That Morty Seinfeld. You know what Morty looks sure like. Enough. Okay, yeah, Morty Seinfeld. But, you beat Morty Seinfeld. But my point is that, look, you... All you, my wallet's gone. Ryan, Ryan pulls his goal for, for Justin Fields this year. What did he say? improve he didn't say make the playoffs he didn't say win x amount of games all you had to do was improve that's the pressure that's on this coaching staff improve win more than three games when you went one in seven in one score games so let's lean into that as you don't really have yeah, much but pressure it's improve but it's also improving the quarterback so that you know he's the guy. Right. Because you have so let him two to... first-round picks next year, and, and so, ideally right. you'd like those to not be used on a quarterback. Good point, j Dog in the comments, too. I didn't even think about this. Uh, scroll up just a little bit. It's right there. He says, and if you're going to throw 100 smoke screens, have EQ active and inactivate Claypool. Yeah, because at least he'll EQ's block. He's a better blocker. Right. If your game plan is to be horizontal the whole freaking game, Put the better blocker in. The only thing that would make sense about this game plan is if they literally are trying to tank. You know what? <laughs> we're not telling anybody, but this is how we're going to do it. And I don't know if we're going to do it or the, or, the, or the Panthers who are now 0-1 are going to do it. But one of us, somehow we're going to get Caleb Williams. So we just got to lose games until Carolina. All right. You know, I, I don't know. Uh, can you guys believe we've had seven months without an NFL game? Well... Good thing that's over. Could well, it seemed a, like a good thing this morning. I don't know now. Uh, but the I'll NFL's here. Months. I'll take eight months. <laughs> yeah, can we go back into hibernation? Uh, actually, I don't want to. I'm still glad football's here. Yeah, and uh, DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL, is giving you all a can't-miss offer. Still available here for week one. New customers can get $200 in bonus bets instantly when you bet just 5 bucks on any NFL game. DraftKings is hooking everyone up with game day greatness. All customers can take advantage of two new offers every single game day this September. Check the app to see what you get. Download now and use code CHGO to sign up. New customers can take home $200 in bonus bets instantly just for betting 5 bucks. That's code CHGO only on DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Connecticut, help is available, available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino Resort. 21 plus age very varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See dkng.com slash football for eligibility, terms, and responsible gaming resources. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance, eligibility, and deposit restrictions apply. Let me correct that. Ontario's in Canada. That's dkng.co. Good job. CA? Slash football. Slash football. That's CA or CO? Yeah, I would actually think that. But, hey, I just read, I'm Ron Burgundy here just reading Sweet. what's in front of me. I'm Ron Burgundy. <sighs> I'm believing in the Bears. Turn it around. Do we have Nick and Will? I think the only or way. Or this? The, let me just say this before we move on to whatever. Move. The only way the Bears can make up from this is to bounce back like Justin Fields says. Not going to put a specific win total on it today. We're all tempered with our I'll start with one next week. One next week, fine. But be somewhere respectable in that middle range and finish the season by beating Green Bay. If you're going to flounder and then get your ass kicked again the last game of the season, then I'm going to start calling for heads. Nick and, Nick and Will at Soldier Field. Take it away. Thanks, Adam. Obviously, Nick. 
this was not what we expected coming in here today. Both of us had the Bears winning 24 to 17. <laughs> Packers end up winning 38 to 20, and seven of those points really garbage time. Pissed off like I am? Absolutely. I think so much hype was going into this uh, this game, this week one matchup, a new season, new opportunity, no Aaron Rodgers. Same result, a ass whooping by yeah. the Green Bay Packers to the Bears here at Sultan Field. Well. I'm going to ask you, what or what unit disappointed you the most, the offense or the defense? Because I think an argument can be made for either. Yeah, no, you can make an argument for either, but I'll go offensively because the Bears go out and get Justin Fields the weapons that he needs to show that he can maximize his talent on the offensive side of the ball. DJ Moore ends with two targets, two receptions, both happen on back-to-back -back plays, and that's all you see from DJ Moore? That is unacceptable and a reason, one of the many reasons, Will, why the Bears end up getting blown out in this game. And DJ Moore is not the only playmaker that we were supposed to see kind of blow up here in this game. And honestly, I was sick and tired of the Bears trying to use this wide receiver screen game. All the horizontal passing that we saw throughout this entire game, Justin Fields in the post-game presser said, hey, that was the game plan. We just need to block it better. And if we do, those are chunk plays. Now I get it, but still, Nick, I wish the Bears could have found ways to push that football down the field, honestly, a, a lot more. Yeah, and I actually talked to Tyler Scott about that. I, I, you know, I said from my observation, it looked like the Bears were attacking more horizontally along, along the boundaries and not in the middle of the field. And I asked him, why was that? And he kind of said, you know, it was the flow of the game. That's how things went. And he said that Jair and Alexander also traveled a little bit. But still, the defense dictated what the offense you know, couldn't do essentially. And that's why you really saw a very horizontal passing attack like you just said. Before. You know, you chose the offense. I'm going to tell you, the defense pissed me off today. Six new defenders on that starting unit. And by God, it looked just like the 2022 Chicago Bears. Can't get off the field on third down. Let the opponent to walk into the end zone once you reach the red zone. No takeaways, no pass rush. Nick, all in all, same old song and dance. Same old song and dance. And you know, look, you upgrade the middle line, you upgrade the linebacker position. TJ Edwards is supposed to be one of the better coverage linebackers, and I get it. You probably should never have him isolated one on one with Aaron Jones, but it wasn't even close. No. He was left in the dust, and that was one of the many touchdowns that Aaron Jones scored in this game. So even the new additions that the Bears brought and added to his defense didn't really make a, too much of an impact in this game. No, I mean, it's week one. There's a lot, a lot of football here left to be played, 16 more games, but you would hope that one of these new guys could have made a big impact here to maybe change the momentum, change, honestly, the final outcome uh, of this game. But once we got to the second half, Green Bay decided, hey, you know, we're taking charge. And the Bears, honestly, had no answer. They had no answer, Will, and it's really disappointing. I know it's just a week one loss. And like you said, there's a lot more football to be played. But to know that your opponent, your NFC North opponent, came out here so much more prepared and ended up with the result they wanted, that's uh, indicative on this coaching staff, the players themselves, and the overall execution of everything that happened today. Yeah, and Iberflus said in his presser, everyone is sick to their stomach. Everyone in the locker room, he felt sick himself to it. And honestly, good for them, but that's not enough. Uh, you know, you have to be able to hang around with the Packers here. And honestly, the Bears want to compete in this division. They have so much they need to clean up, really, in all three phases. Penalties, too, we'd even mention huge killer. Huge killer, but you know what, well, Honestly, I don't even want to talk about this game <laughs> anymore. Neither do the Bears. They want to move on, like you yep. said, get on to Tampa Bay. But that's going to do it for Will and I here at Soldier Field. Back to Adam and the guys back in the studio. All right, thanks, Nick. Uh, I mean, great. I mean, that was good stuff from both Nick and Will. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm when I'm listening to Will talk about the defense. I, I I can't help but think to myself, I don't know, wasn't that Travis Gibson guy? Wasn't he making some plays in the preseason? Wasn't Terrell Lewis in the backfield a ton? Yeah, I'm just I'm I'm not saying I'm just saying, <clears throat> Pappy North, but they weren't good enough to be on this team. I don't know. And Terrell Lewis didn't get picked up by any team even after the Bears dropped him. So I don't know what it is. That was but a scheme yeah. fit here though. All you can do is wait. Terrell Lewis isn't on any roster. He didn't get picked up by anybody. You sure about that? Which is, I mean, I, that's I thought that was the case as of yeah. a few that's days bizarre. ago. Yeah, yeah, and I thought he looked great, and I would have preferred to see him out there. And today. He originally made the team, right? But the rest of the league, I guess, disagrees, like and the Bears disagree. But what I saw, and I can only go off of what I'm seeing, I thought he was great as a pass rusher in the well, preseason. Maybe they signed him back camp. this week. Still out there? Might as well. Let's I mean, go. What do they have this Valus Jones roster spot for? Now I do want to. I mean, cry. the dude had three sacks in the preseason. I'm, I'm serious. Like, uh, all right.
Let's get to Carm's notes. Then we're actually going to go back to Nick real quick because we have some questions about these press conferences, some of the stuff in the locker room. My notes are fairly truncated today because we were on the show live, and then I just got so depressed that I just laid there. It seemed like you were writing a lot in the first half. I was at the start. I mean, I was so fired up with Tyler Scott in the opening kickoff, and then the screen to Herbert. Um, and then I was like, they're going to it's going to be a three and out, but then they picked up the sweep the first down on that screen. Um, and then I love the throw to Tyler Scott. Um, Fields helped love get tickets. Adam Hogue sitting there. What a dick. <laughs> I, 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 I okay, hate for the record, that was a joke. Yes. From but, a human nature standpoint, but I it, support it. But it, what that wasn't that our first I totally it, forgot about that. It got more and more annoying seeing Jordan Love's mom celebrate right. in Fields in tickets that Justin Fields got him. Right. She should have been in the last row of the end zone, not in the 50-yard line in the, in, the, in the Sweet United Club, wherever the hell she was. Right, First of all, one-to-one right. one odds uh, that that was going to be Tom Rinaldi's first report of the season. Right, I mean, there was not more of a Tom Rinaldi report than that one. Wasn't it when Jordan Love made his first start last year against the Chiefs? They had him all the way up in the top row yeah. of the stadium. So, jo same thing this week. Jordan Love couldn't get better tickets. So he calls up, this is all according to Tom Rinaldi on the broadcast, so he calls up Justin Fields. Justin Fields gets some great seats, 200 level, like 50-yard line. If, if so That much, was the moment you knew this game was going downhill. So much for the rivalry. Wherever you want, let me hook up your mom. By the way, Justin, great move. Very nice of you to do that. Super nice, but all the Bears fans in that section, you, yeah. you kind of ruined their day. <laughs> Can you imagine how annoying that person must have been? I think she should have used game time. She should have had to go to game time. Great point. Jordan Love, you're starting quarterback in the NFL now. You yeah. can afford game time tickets. Uh, I wrote down Fields, Komet, Sneaks, Pathway to a Loss, Flus, F. Um, third down timeout. I like when your notes are funny. Yeah. The, th <laughs> the yeah, third down. Do you, you remember when they got to third down early and the entire defense was doing jumping jacks like they were about to get off the field? It was so sweet. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, uh, they ended up getting into the end zone. Uh, and I, got, I don't remember this exactly, but I wrote down Greg Braggs whining on third and two because somebody didn't make a tackle. Adam Hogue is leaving the show right now, which is – Fine. Later, Adam. Um, I'm sure. I'm sure I'll be back. Uh, Braxton Jones' false start on the Mooney catch. How off did that offensive line look today? I thought it looked off. I thought they got away with some false starts early in the game. Then that one where they pulled Komet and they called it a false start because he like left early. I thought they had gotten away with that a couple times before that. And you know what helps on the timing of snapping the ball? A center that knows what he's doing. Well, not only that, but reps. In yeah, the preseason. Pre yeah, that would be good. Uh, I thought Lucas Patrick was just off all day. Uh, the Flus had the hand over the mouth at one point. I thought it was a stealth Flus. Uh, Fields to Herbert. He was four for four at that at that point. Um, By the way, I like Flus's look today. The glasses, no hat. He's a power looking Flus. A little hoodie. Uh, Appreciated it. DJ Moore took a shot at Zaire Alexander. I wrote down. Um, yeah. Chase Claypool, the I wrote penalty. down. Penalty, that was stupid. Right. Chase Claypool, I wrote down, terrible play call. Komet pass should have been illegal hands uh, on a Packer. That was at 7 6. Um, Edmonds and Edwards look gang tackle. Talking to your microphone. Okay. <laughs> um, then early on, I was getting texts from people Fields is Gale when he was getting like, loose. Gale Sayers. Gale Sayers. Yeah. Um, and then I, Braggs, his voice is terrible, so I kept on telling him to, sh to stop talking, and then he just screamed across the way, shut up, Mark. So that was a bad effort. You were giving me good advice, but I was too pissed off to take it. Yeah. Um, did you guys go over? I'm doing my notes right oh, now. I'm sorry. Thank I you very much. Done. I thought the throw. I, I just, I just have, I just have a, I just have th literally two more, and I just lost steam today. I gave Luke Getze a D minus. I think I'm moving that down to an F. Um, here comes the comeback at 24 to six. And then they did get make it to 24, 14. That was a sweet two point conversion. I loved Herbert walking through we, the momentum was there. And then I wrote Roshan Johnson killed that guy. We love Roshan Johnson. Love you, Roshan. You know, he obviously I'm not going on me ball island here, but when Roshan 
ran that dude over on his first, like, basically attempt of his career. Yeah, that was cool. It reminded me of when Adrian Peterson did that. I'm not saying he's AP, but it was just very reminiscent of the way he trucked that yeah. dude. Roshan, AP, Johnson. He is literally the only silver lining of this game. Somebody's going to buy a 23 jersey. My, la- you, my last note in here is that Trenton Gill belongs in Canton. Did I you love guys that guy. quickly, um, but did you guys go over earlier the amount of pass yards over 10 yards out of the 37? No. Per Zach Pearson who had a passing charts up. Justin Fields' pass chart from week one, just four attempts of 37 attempts past 10 yards. Two of four of those throws, one was a touchdown, one was an interception. Yeah, I seriously don't care if he throws six interceptions next week. Let him throw the ball down the yep. field. Time is a flat circle. And uh, mm, John Shoup is the offensive coordinator. Nick, is that Hallis Hall looking uh, – no, he's at Soldier Field. Hallis Hall, whatever. Go go to Hallis Hall. Like, <laughs> go to Hallis. <laughs> go to Hallis. No, he's at Soldier Field. What an adorable scene he's got there. Yeah. Looks, looks nice, Nick. Maybe scoot a little closer so we can see that pretty face of yours. There we go. I hate it here. <laughs> I hate it. This is awful. Um, Greg, I, I can hear it in your voice. You've lost it after probably yelling this entire time at this Bears team. Um, guys, what the hell? I know you guys have been talking for a long time about this, but what the hell was that? It's insane <laughs> that we are talking about this. I literally, the last time I joined you guys, I'm like, we're going to be talking about a Bears victory. The exact, the exact opposite in every facet. It, it, it's incredible, you guys, but um, I'm glad to be joining you and to talk this through. Low key, that would be a great headline in the Sun-Times tomorrow. What was that? Just what the hell? <laughs> Like, as a headline, just on the front page. Or just um, dog shit, and period. <laughs> Poop emoji. Front page of the Sun-Times. They, I mean, all of these could be good and fully uh, capture what happened out there today. Um, yeah, Nick, I wrote in my uh, our instant reactions, which, by the way, are up on allchio.com. Um, whatever the worst-case scenario could have possibly been that we would have drawn up before this game, that was worse than that. Yeah, I don't even know what I wrote, but it wasn't. It was something along those lines. All right, Nick, um, give us the locker room, Nick. Well, tell us a little bit about what Fields had to say and um, what he meant. What uh, I don't know. Give us some hope, for the love of God. <laughs> yeah, let's. Uh, I don't know if this is going to give you hope, but here's kind of the rundown of what Fields was asked about and what he said. Kind of again was asked right off the bat, like what happened, what what happened in this uh, this game here, and he, he pointed to those penalties really hurting them, getting behind the chains and the self inflicted penalties. It's hard to succeed when when you're hurting yourself, and you know obviously the Bears couldn't overcome a lot of those pre snap penalties. Braxton Jones was filling up the stat sheet. You guys never want to see that from an offensive lineman. But the one thing I was really curious about, and from Justin Fields' point of view, like the DJ Moore. The two targets, two receptions, they happen on back-to-back plays in that second quarter. And then you don't see anything else from him. And Justin Fields said, basically, that Moore's not going to get 100 yards every game. That's not going to happen, no doubt. But he will get more touches for sure. And you guys were kind of talking about Justin Fields' pass chart and the emphasis of wanting to attack more of the horizontal game. Um, Justin Fields was asked about those screen passes, and he said if there were better blocking those could have led to big plays. Didn't do our best at blocking the perimeter. And so this goes back to how, you know, we saw the inactives. Equinemia St. Brown was one of the inactives there. He's one of the better blocking wide receivers, yeah. you guys. So it's interesting that they're trying to attack the perimeter and doing so with blocking with their wide receivers. And your best blo- one of your better blocking wide receivers is not active for game day. It's incredible how... You don't have him there, and, you know, it doesn't result to what you want to have on the football field. But they kept going back to those plays over and over again. And, you know, um, you know, I talked to Tyler Scott, just Tyler Scott to tie this all together. I asked him, like, there, it seemed like from the outside looking in that there was more of an emphasis to attack the perimeter or to attack the boundary. And I asked him, what, why was that? And he just said, Tyler Scott now, when I spoke to him in the locker room, just said the flow of the game. Jair may have traveled with, with DJ Moore a little bit as he did in this game, so that kind of influenced thing. But it wasn't planned. It was just the flow of the game. So, guys, I mean, 
I don't know if that really is what the answer that Bears fans want to know exactly why, you know, that was such an emphasis in this, this game plan by Luke Getze, but that's all I can get out of, um, you know, just Tyler Scott and hearing from Joseph Fields kind of talk about why, you know, it was such an emphasis again to attack the, the perimeter, the boundaries for, for this Bears um, offense here. You know, and Nick, uh, I know, no, it's, let's hang on a second. I, I don't want to hear that. You know, like, and I'm, you're just reporting what they're saying. I get it. But let me turn into OB for a second where I'm mad at you for telling us. No. Um, okay. If if you're going to have a bad game from a wide receiver because of a corner shutting him down, it should look like um, the stat line should be more like 10 targets, 4 catches, 40 yards, right? It shouldn't be two targets. Like, what was the game? Was this last year Jalen Johnson, uh, A.J. Brown? Like, Jalen Johnson had a good game against Jalen uh, against A.J. Brown last year, but, like, A.J. Brown still found a way to have success and get the big play. Like, that's what number one wide receivers are in this league, okay? And you still... Find a way to force them the football in the right moments and get production out of it. And even when at the end of the day it doesn't look good, like you say, oh, man, Devontae Adams just had a bad day, it's still like 11, 12 targets and maybe four catches. It's not two targets. That's that, no, that, that's I, just giving up on the guy you traded the number one pick for. It's a bad game plan. It's a terrible game plan. And what really was, I guess, disheartening was like, after DJ Moore's second reception that picked up a first down and set the Bears up in the, the red zone, he was out, you guys, for first down, the first and goal and second and goal, and didn't get back onto the field until third and goal. It's like, what are you oh. doing not having your best wide receiver in the most crucial part of the, the football field? It's, it's blasphemy, you guys. Uh, it's, it's a really interesting game. I mean, really interesting from Luke Getze's perspective of how to attack this Green Bay uh, you know, defense. Um, you know, I, I was also just going back to Fields and what he talked about. I asked him the one play that we all probably wanted to see more of were the downfield throw to the touchdown to Darnell Mooney. And I asked Fields, like, what did you see? It looked like pre snap that. And I asked him, like, it looked like pre snap he changed something. And he said, I thought I saw cover zero. I checked the protection, got us in a better protection, protection, and boom, Justin Fields delivers a ball to Darnell Mooney. It's a touchdown. And look, that play shows me that he has an understanding of what the Packers are bringing, checks the protection, puts them in a better one, throws the ball to touchdown. But we didn't – We Justin Fields didn't get the opportunity, I think, from his offensive coordinator to show more of that because so much was thrown on the boundaries. But, um, yeah, I wish we would have seen more downfield throws. Like Mark, uh, I said, like you said, I want to see that next game. And I think on the pregame show I wanted to see 27 attempts – he got more than that, but obviously it wasn't the result that we all wanted to see. So, Nick, when you're when you're talking about that play and then placing blame on on Luke Getze in some ways, that's what we're trying to understand here on this post game show. Talking about the chicken or the egg, they threw so many screen passes, but is that because of ineptitude of play calling or because they don't trust Justin Fields to? throw 30 times and read the field like that, like you just mentioned, how he saw that it was cover zero and do that consistently? It's a good question, Greg. I, I think they really like the idea of bl their wide receivers or whoever blocking for their pass catcher on the boundary and making a play that way. And that's why you kept seeing it over and over again. But it, it obviously wasn't working. There was no really good adjustment. And then it's, you know, ironically, on the first, what, first drive of the second half for the Green Bay Packers, they have that ma amazing executed screen pass to Aaron Jones where Jordan Love's going one way, throws it back across the field, and, you know, you get some a big chunk play, and that's how a screen play should be executed. But I think there is a little bit of everything going on in this week one loss. Like, do they not trust Justin Fields? Justin Fields showed an understanding of how to check the protection, but – all in all, it was just a you know an overall terrible game plan if you wanted to try to actually attack this Packers defense. Just for the record, DJ Moore in 2021, 2020, and 2019, 
in the entire season, in each of them, he had one game under under 25 yards. One a year, 21, 20, 19. Last year it happened six times, but that was with Baker Mayfield, Sam Darnold, and P.J. Walker. So let's give him a pass. That perf- that I'm not say- the field saying he's not going to always have 100 yards, but I think it's just worth noting that, hey, look, when he had – even mediocre quarterback play. It happened once per season in 21, 20, and 19. Nick, what about the defense? Uh, I mean, yeah. if Alan Williams was here right now, what would you ask him? And I, I don't know if you talked to any of those guys, but uh, I'm just curious that side of the ball. It would be, you know, WTF, but, you know, I don't want to don't want to do that here on, on the show. But so I got a chance to talk to, to Dominique Robinson in the locker room. I literally asked him, what happened out there? It's just what, what, what happened, Dom? Uh, and he said, I ain't going to lie. I wasn't expecting that to end that way. And I asked him, was it execution on your guys' end? Was execution on Green Bay Packers? Did one side execute better? And he said, we did pretty good for the most part, but let up big plays. Minimize those bigger plays. We'll be all right. And then I asked him, did you not expect something from, from this Packers offense and how they attacked you? And then he contradicted himself saying, we knew everything was coming. It was just a lack of execution. We just got to execute. Which is it, Dominique Robinson? I don't know. And I don't think this, this Bears defense knew after, you know, letting up such big plays, such big windows happen to, you know, Luke Musgrave, the big screenplay to Aaron Jones. There were just – there was there's probably more that Jordan Love even left out on the field, you guys. And then there were just big, wide-open holes in the defense. And, look, they go out and get TJ, TJ Edwards, you guys, one of the better – Past coverage linebackers, you know, last season. He got smoked. By Why? Him. I don't know how Allen Williams isolates him on Aaron Jones in space. Like, even though he's one of the better guys, that that's not a win in your in your defense ever. So there's just a lot of questionable things that you know, from not having a consistent pass rush. You go out get Yannick Ngakwe, he gets a sack, but you didn't see much else from anybody else. And I think that. Even though Dominic Robinson said we we knew what they were going to do, it on the field it showed a completely different thing, you guys. And I, Matt Eberflus highlighted that they kept the Green Bay Packers to I think it was a two point nine average rushing the ball. Great, look at all the other stats though that really go heavily favored in uh, Green Bay's uh, Green Bay's way. All right, Nick. Uh, final thoughts. Uh, anything we're missing? Um, you know, I got a chance to ask Matt Eberflus one question, just what bothers you the most about this loss that you need to correct over anything else right now? Because there's so many things, but is there anything that kind of takes priority? And his question or his answer was, uh, just the basics of football, eliminate penalties, protect the football, take football away. Do, did all that really well in practice, he said, but, uh, you know, needs to play better out on the field. And he just said, everyone is sick to their stomachs and, you know, Justin Fields echoed those words, and I know it doesn't matter. No one's going to care, but it seemed pretty sincere when he, you know, apologized for the result. He said sorry to his teammates, and then he looked at the camera and said sorry to the fans that are rooting for us. Well, they'll bounce back, he said. Hopefully, we see that, you guys. Tampa Bay, uh, did they not? Did they beat the Minnesota Vikings earlier today, if I'm not uh, mistaken? But yes. it, there's nothing guaranteed in this league, so... We need to see the Bears make a lot of adjustments. They have to do so in a week on the road in Tampa Bay. All right, Nick, Nick. They go to you go to Tampa and they lose. Enjoy the rest of your life. Yeah, I'll just stay there. <laughs> what I'll the just, hell? Well, he's I'll just not playing there, for them. He's not getting fired if the Bears lose. I'm just saying we're closing down the show if they start 0-2 oh. with the Chiefs coming up next. It's a lot on the line then. Yeesh. A lot Jeez. of pressure. I hope not. I now mean, we got this, Nick. Hey, I got I got some positive thoughts to end the show. One, okay, uh, Nick, uh, good job. We appreciate you, uh, even when you give us bad news and comments from the locker room. Um, go get some sleep and uh, gear up for another day tomorrow at House Hall. We'll Observe be back, you guys. Uh, yeah, thanks for holding it down at the studio. Um, yeah, we'll be back to do this again next week. Hopefully we see a different result, but I'm going to go do some writing. Have fun with the rest of the show, you guys. And you can read all that at allchgo.com. Uh, instant reactions up now. Nick will have the rest of it uh, in a little bit here. Um, I have one final comment to make, and then you can go to. Um, Jalen Carter had a sack, a quarterback hit, and a TFL for the Eagles today. Whoopsie. Might have blown that one. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't looking good. 
What do those guys cost? About $30 million a year to... Remember uh, Carl Brooks, the guy from Bowling Green that I talked a lot about? Remember when he sacked Justin Fields? Remember when he fell to the sixth round of the draft and was... I don't remember because I was blind with rage. And my voice is officially gone. <laughs> we got to end the show before Bragg's. Let me, let me Bragg's supposed to do uh, Bad After Dark tomorrow night. Let, let me give we'll you this. He's got to be on Spaces in let like me an give, hour. Let me give no, you, I'm not. No, let me no gi- Spaces for you. No Spaces, I promise. I'll take over Bad After Dark, uh, Bragg's After Dark. We'll make Corey's going to be on it, right? Just slow down. Let's get to Monday morning. Okay, let me just. <laughs> all right, let me. Okay, everybody. Might every, not make it. Right. I might drive that U Haul van right into Lake Michigan. I have to give you a ride to that U Haul van. I can't wait to hang out with you more. Let me. <laughs> the picture of Braggs driving around sh- downtown Chicago in a U Haul van crying would be like the perfect end to this day. I'm going to do something with content, but let me just say this to, <laughs> to everybody. Uh, look. Last year, the Detroit Lions started the season one and whatever. There we go. And they six. just they one and six. One and six. Uh, great, close enough. One and six. Well, and one and whatever is yeah, it's close. One enough. and a lot. One and six, and they just beat the Kansas City Chiefs to start out this season, and they had a chance to make the playoffs last year and were the darlings of the NFL in the second half of the year. I said months ago on this show, months ago, that I expect the Bears to start slow. They've got 7,000 new players, 26 of them to be exact. Yes, there is more familiarity with an offense with Luke Getze in his second season and Flus in his second season, but there was no logical way to really say that they were going to hit the ground running and start looking like a, a playoff team at the start of the season. So I expected it to be rocky. Did I expect it to be this rocky and get completely smoked at home against a team that was playing without their top wide receiver and basically rebuilding and a quarterback making his second start in the NFL? No, I didn't. So that's slightly concerning. But I did expect Rocky Waters at the beginning, and so I personally am going to take a deep breath and say this is part of the Bears' 2023 process, and it is a long season. And last year, they were able to make a major adjustment after the Commanders game and unlock the offense. So I am going to believe that that is a possibility to happen again, even a likelihood due to the fact that there's a lot more talent on this roster. So I'm going to go as far as to expect that that is going to happen. So, yes, back to the drawing board for all of them, but I am optimistic that it can't get worse and that it will get better and that the Bears can be in a lot better place as the season moves along. So that is my positivity to end the show. Rocky Waters at the beginning of the season was to be expected, and that's certainly what we had today. Uh, okay, Braggs is uh, muted because his voice is muted. Yep. Um, it's a good way. To, it's good perspective. I would just respond by saying I'm totally on board with all that. I still think this game gets put in a vacuum and everything is fair game because you just got blown out by your rival without Aaron Rodgers. All the smoke that's coming their way for the way they have presented themselves. Both can be true. You can get... Everything we could say about this game, all the criticism right. can all be fair, can all be accurate. And yes, this coaching staff, this regime, you can still have faith in them that a year from now. Well, at the end of the day, it'll look different. They're not playing the Chiefs next week. They're playing the Bucks, and I don't really give a shit that they won. Go out there and and win that game, and then you'll stymie some of the criticism. If you go out there and look like you look today, it's just going to keep getting worse. Um, we end this show. Well, we have some super chats to get to, don't we? I mean, we have. I, I want to thank everyone. There's, we've literally had, I think, like 85 super chats today, which is amazing, yeah. and I appreciate all. Which of could you. be a whole show. It could be a whole show. I, I mean, I, I've shown them all on screen. There's probably no way we could read them all, but sounds like a whole show to me on uh, Monday. Yeah. Well, I don't well, know. We could just like start tossing some out you want to like see these and, and just pick them and, and we'll go with what you uh, want yeah let's give some some love I appreciate it. well well you know what we got to do is how many are over like 15 bucks at least uh, let's see let's start there 
Okay. And yeah. again, we have shown all these. We appreciate all the support. We just can't really get to all of them. Yeah, we'll be here till. Uh, Richard. Or I'll die. Oh, this one I, I, oh we did yeah, that we one. We did that one already, yeah. We did that one. that one. No. <laughs> Uh, uh, that's one from Kevin. Kevin's is depressing. I don't know if I want to read that. <laughs> yeah, read that it. one is rough. <laughs> um, read it. Uh, how about T. Lorenzo? I need a good cry. A little, a little Canadian money. We can go back to Kevin's. Uh, look, uh, T. Lorenzo, 28 Canadian doll hairs. Uh, the play calling and horrible mistakes lost that game for us. That looked like a nervous team that struggles early and didn't believe they could get back in it. Then the muff snap that turned into a first and goal. Sealed it. Uh, oh, that's what I didn't get to in my notes. Was that bobbled snap by Jordan Love, the turnaround no-look bomb to like a falling down Luke Musgrave? I mean, how many of those moments does there have to be in Bears-Packers rivalry games? Every time. The quarterback doesn't matter. There's always that one deep, weird play that's so close to going the other way. For the Bears, and instead basically turns into a touchdown for the Packers. Always! I thought that, I, I'm, I don't know, but it, to me it looked like Edwards was covering Musgrave on that play, and when he fell down, that TJ went to make a play, henceforth leaving him wide open. That sucked. Yeah. And yes, that is on brand. All right. Yeah, so and, and Kevin uh, says, way to lead uh, us to Kevin's uh, comment here. Yeah, and, I don't uh, read it out loud, but he says he wants to blank himself. <laughs> actually sounds worse than what it says. I travel the country for this team, go to the draft, go to away games, listen to every podcast, watch every minute of every game. Why do I do this to myself? Being a Bears fan is the absolute worst. Kevin, let me tell you something, my friend. When it happens, because of your investment, it's going to feel better to you than it will to 99.9% of fans out there because you have been all in. Same thing to the dude, for, to the guy from my left. He'll probably be happy for at least three hours. Yep. But, but, but it'll be a great three hours. Well, you know what's funny is when the Cubs won it, and I waited my whole life for that, because they almost blew it. I thought I was going to be, like, so happy the day the Cubs won it. And because they almost blew it, I was – I wasn't. I was just so relieved that I didn't have to. And that's kind of how this game felt when they started to come back. I was like, even if they won today, I'm not going to be happy. I'm just going to be relieved yeah. that they didn't blow it. And of course, they just lost anyway. They they got their ass kicked in the last and fourth quarter. So that made me feel so much better. Well, Kevin, this is why I say this all the time. Bears fans deserve better. Like, I grew up Bears fan. We all did here, but. Like, we appreciate every minute of every podcast you listen to. At least we're getting paid to talk into the microphone. Like, we're getting paid to yep. watch the stuff. We're living and the dream over here. You, and, and it trust me, it gets hard. I've had plenty of seasons where I'm like, go home to my wife after a game. It was like, it's how hungry. many freaking shows do we have to do like this? Like, it's unbelievable. But those of you that are not getting paid right. to watch this, you keep that are actually paying to put a super chat up like that here on the screen to us here at CSGO. We, I just, we greatly, greatly appreciate it because you especially, and anybody still watching the show an hour and 53 minutes into it, Almost two deserve point. better than what that team gave you today two, at Soldier Field. Two point that was three, embarrassing. 2.3 thousand fans still watching live two hours into a show where the Bears got their ass kicked in one of the most embarrassing, one of many embarrassing opening season losses against the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, try, the one thing I'll always say is you're not going to find a more loyal fan base than the fans in the city of Chicago for all teams. It'd be great if they started winning for us, though, huh? The day they do, man, will the... Could you imagine C CHGO? Like yeah, but we've, what we've built uh, in a year and a half... With nothing but losses. Yeah. <laughs> Cubs are going to the playoffs, baby. Maybe. They just lost three or four to the uh, Snakes. They won today. Okay. God damn it, Lawrence. Well, okay. you knew that. You didn't know there were new NFL games, I but you knew the Cubs won. Honestly, in the fourth quarter, I Googled that because I was like, what the fuck did the Cubs do today? I'm sorry. I'm I got to stop swearing. You, you got to just stop talking in general. I really want you to have do. a voice tomorrow. Uh, Tim, $20. Tim Connery. <laughs> We all knew this would be scorched earth after this loss. Floose isn't it. Fields has no O-line. But F 
blank beep this product on the field. Come on, this is sad. Yeah, look, we can just keep reading them. We don't yeah, need to, we don't yeah, need to, a good point. I just rant about it. I, I do want to remind. <laughs> I, can, I can read them until my voice is literally gone. <laughs> I just want to remind everybody that when you're a fan, when you are a fan of a team that constantly disappoints you, the payoff when they finally do something is greater. Stop. No. Yes, that's it not, is. That's for tomorrow's show. They fucked up today. Stop trying to make it more than what it was. These, you can talk about that tomorrow. You want them to turn around? Do you want? Do you think they're going to be the Lions from last year? Save that for tomorrow. This day is about I, Aaron Rodgers being gone, and you weren't even competitive. Do you ever have conversations at home about control freak type of stuff? Does that ever come up? What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you, he's, he's right. I am going to say Time what's out. on we my got, mind, Adam. We got Hoke. Duke level super chat from D2B Cody. $100 super chat. <laughs> Let's rally. Long season. We Thank all knew you. it would be a process. See, okay. Hogue? Okay. Well, I'm I not going to yell at him because he paid $100. Well, I, I, I'm yelling at you because you're my buddy and I, I just don't I, agree with you. I think I led him to that and you should thank me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That, that's right. Long you know what's season. amazing is I got another show with Adam Johns to do. When the Bears Where lost in 2018 at Green Bay on the road, it was a, the opener against Green Bay. Yeah, I was there. They were down. They were up like 20 <laughs> at the half. It was a great and then game. Randall until Cobb it wasn't. Scored the touchdown to win it. It was miserable. This one was just an ass kicking, so it's different. But that team lost that first game. And then by the end of the year, had come back, had a nice season, and even beat the Packers at home in but December. See, if you really to win examine the division. that game, they gave you reasons to right. believe in These that guys game. Didn't. And I remember doing that post game show, going out with Hampton OB, and they didn't want to hear it. They wanted Nagy fired after that game. Right. Which was his first ever game, by the way. Maybe they were on to something. We should, maybe we should have listened to them. Right. But I remember trying to convince them after that game. I don't know. I think like there's some really re some reasons here to be hopeful that this team might be different. This team didn't give you that today. No, they had Roshan Johnson and a couple of nice no. boots off the foot of yeah. the punter and the kicker. It, it doesn't give you hope. This team is was definitely more of the 2019 vibes. Inept offense, inept play calling. You're questioning everything. Okay, look. I'll come back tomorrow. We'll be here at noon, and I'll be positive Adam Hogue. I promise. No, you won't. Listen, Hogue, you have nothing to do now other than another podcast with Adam Yeah, Johns. other than another podcast, <laughs> an hour <laughs> drive home, oh, and boy. watch the tape, which will be fun. Not fun. I'm going to write Maybe up. get a couple hours of sleep. I'm going to do my come back down here tomorrow. Yeah. And pretend that everything's going to be fine against Tampa. I have to drive Braggs to wherever he has to go. I'll be writing out my grades. That'll be fun. If you give any grade over... Roshan Johnson gets an A+. Plus. But he doesn't do that. How do you do it? By unit? Or by I do it by unit. By QB. position group? Yes. What do you give the QB right now? C-? minus. My first thought was uh, D+. Plus. Okay. See how that... That leads. This super chat was one I wanted to bring up from Javen. He says people want Fields to. It was twenty dollars. Thank you, Javen. He says people want Fields to overcome bad penalties, bad offensive line, bad play calling, and the one game plan we had didn't work because receivers can't block. The interception was inexcusable. But my God, can he get some help? I get it, but it's, that goes back to what Braggs was talking about. Like it's just like this endless talking the, circle it's of it's like it's it could be. And I'm I just hate saying. I just hate to say it. Like the good quarterbacks get out of that, don't they? I mean, listen. No, let because, me back up. Let me back up. Let me. The exceptional quarterbacks get out of that. I mean, could, he, I, I still think Justin okay, so, Cannon will so be last good. Last year, the problem for Fields was receivers. Right, Mahomes didn't have good receivers on Thursday night. And the numbers reflected that, and they lost. Yeah, but it was a little bit more obvious that it was like, there's a great pass right in Kadarius Tony's face, hands, and it goes off his hands for a pick six. Like, 
What's right, Mahomes so supposed to do about only that? Four passes over ten yards. One went for a touchdown. One for, went for a pick. Like Mark said, there has to be more and live with whatever the results are. Period. Yeah. I'm not going to twist myself into a pretzel defending fields. And I also, we all know what it's supposed to look like. It didn't look like it. He's holding on to the ball too long. His decision-making has to get better. Maybe if I was going to be a little more optimistic or maybe just a little more balanced on his grade, I'd give him a C today. I think that's actually probably a more accurate take of how the QB played. By the way, Roshan, I hate to say it, had that penalty to start the game. Which was no, not we're good. not bashing Roshan today. And, Don't do this and, to me. And Let for me Mr. Mr. Awesome Special Teamer, missed the tackle after the pick that turned into a pick six. Otherwise, that ball's at 30. Hogue went nuts at that point. I'm like, I don't care. He just threw one of the worst <laughs> interceptions, threw it into three Carb, dudes. That was a terrible moment. Carb literally scolded me because – he throws the awful interception, and so, I'm yelling at the screen about Roshan missing the tackle. Right. A running back missing a tackle on an interception like, instead of the quarterback. I got it. $50 yeah. super chat. Well, wait, I mean, let's, let's hammer this yes, one sir. first from Redzena, Michael Redzena, 20 bucks. Uh, just emotionally separating here. He says if Fields continues this performance, he'll end the season with 3,672 passing yards and 1,003 rushing. I think we'd all take these stats before the season. Evidence that stats aren't the only story. God damn it, I would Michael. To, he just pulled me back in. I would have to do the math. I don't know We're if the math back, works. baby. Does the math actually work on that 20, 244? He, I did the math on his yards. He's right. About, yes, the math is right. I know it's right on the Look, passing yards. I, I'm staring on the other end of this screen. What our viewers cannot see right now is I am looking at the most positive – most handsome, glorious-looking, awesome guy named Big Dave. And even he is shaking his head right now like, nah, man, that ain't it. <laughs> and if that's where we're at, I know that. I hate everybody. Though. Yeah. <laughs> he just, Big Dave just says he hates everybody. When have you ever heard him say that? Even me? Oh, okay. Not me. It's not. It's, it's. It's, yeah. it's 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 not a uh, the whole the, the look at him <laughs> oh Okay, this was yes. that was great. Yeah. Well done, well done. You That's my guy. That, that, that was great. Yeah, that was great. Spoke for the fan base. No, it was great. Yeah. No, it was it was great. All right. We got another fifty. We got another fifty dollars super chat here. D two B Cody fifty dollars. I'm as depressed as all y'all. But 26 new players take time to come together. Coaching looked rough. However, there was small glimpses of hope. I am clinging to that hope. Well, Do you guys want to hear one hopeful thing out of me before we yeah. leave? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Hope. All right. Last year, they didn't look like they knew what the hell they were doing the first five weeks of the season two with their offensive game plan. Right. And they had a wake-up call against Washington. They went into the mini-buy. They don't have a mini-buy this time. And they... Switch things up, and I hate to say it. They didn't go to a design run to Justin Fields until, like, the fourth quarter when it was too late. You're probably going to have to throw more of that in there next week against Tampa to open things up. Well, that's what I'm saying, because you, you talk about he made the adjustment, and you're like, oh, I believe there's a progression. Well, your adjustments better come a lot quicker this year. Yeah. In fact, next week. But we did see them last year do it. So, like, I do. there is hope that this coaching staff can look themselves in the mirror – 
and say, yeah, we fucked that up. We got to do something different next week. You I hope you better do that, or otherwise Baker Mayfield of all people. Today. I think we set an F-bomb record on today's show. Yeah. Well, I, 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 in, my po- in, my, <laughs> in my positivity, I teed that up about an hour ago. That's what I said, I think. Yeah, I blacked out the first hour of this show. Yeah. So I was you yelled at me rage. then. You basically yelled at me then for saying that, but now you've gotten there, so congratulations. You're on Team Carm. Welcome to it. Feels awful. All right, we, we could probably end the show. Oh, yeah, I want to go. Hey, I want to go to bed. <laughs> Any <laughs> super chats we didn't get to? We love you. Thank you so much for all the support, not only during this show, but also just everybody coming out to the tailgate. All that hope that we experienced, all that Goose Island that we consumed, all that barbecue that tasted so good, all those bees that tried to kill me. We had a great day until kickoff. Let's okay. let, let's end on a positive note. Braggs, we need you here. Ready? Three, two, no, one. I'm not singing. Bear down. No, stop. Oh my stop. God. I would Shut like up. to thank everybody behind the scenes. We had an awesome say. crew. What are you doing? Casey. Chicago. Emma. Bears. Kevin Kadick. Jake Flanagan. Big Dave's here. Lawrence. All the work Braggs put into the tailgate and everyone else. We had support from DNVR today. We sold a ton of merch. Thank you to everybody who bought that shit. <laughs> We're the pride and joy of it. What, Kev? Steven Nicholas behind the scenes, too. Casey. I said her already. I, I muted him. Why does he do I, I muted him like a minute and a half okay, ago. Okay, good. Okay, Braggs, rest your voice. Get, get some tea, the medicine ball tea from uh, Starbucks. Well, we'll never forget the Richard rain. says, how much for Braggs to read Goodnight Moon? Good night, Moon. Or Good book. <laughs> That's actually funny. All right. Well, Good night, air. Good night, nobody. Good God night, noises everywhere. Me.